How's it going, everybody? Welcome to NWP tonight here on Danny B Talks right here on YouTube. I'm joined today by my lovely colleagues, Jarrett Lundberg, The Iceberg, and Eric Eastup. Appreciate uh, Paige from Daily Down for stepping in my place last week when I was on vacation, but glad to be back. Glad to be back right here on my channel. Uh, guys, let's uh, let's get right into it. Martinsville. Lots of people had hot that's dogs. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> lots of people had hot dogs and... Uh, yeah, uh, very uh, fitting day for Hendrick Motorsports, I would say, though. Yep. Uh, <laughs> they're about the only ones who enjoyed themselves, I think. I, I know. Yeah, it's uh, – I put it like this. Everyone already knew that the ratings were in trouble going up against the Iowa Hawkeyes and South Carolina Gamecocks women's basketball game. But uh, it didn't help that the on-track product was just – Flat dookie. I guess that's the best way to say yeah. it. Wait, is this true? Hold on. Ross Crash Dane in the chat says, did you know it was the 40th anniversary of Hendrick Motorsports? Is that true? What? No. Whoa. No, no I, I just Wow. Wow. Like and that makes team. it even cooler. They had those red cars. Yeah, I, you know, I wondered why they had the red cars. I thought it had something to do with the hot dogs, like the Martinsville hot dog oh, theme. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, that makes sense. But now, you know, them finishing one, two, three, it just makes it all the more momentous. But, but guys, guys. It, the more important thing here, it was Hendrick's 40th anniversary. What? And there oh were 1,500 people on the backstretch. I, I can still red. see them in my nightmares. They were in <laughs> red. And, and, it, and, and did you know this? Hendrick Motorsports has won at Martinsville before. Whoa. Many times, in fact. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, I think all four of their drivers have a grandfather clock right now. The only thing, I, like all jokes aside now, bring it back down to <laughs> earth for a moment. I didn't hate the little bit of Hendrick Homerism in the broadcast. Like, I get it. It's a special day for them. They're NASCAR's most successful team. I get some special treatment. But there was at least twice I heard Clint Boyer awkwardly plug Rick Hendrick's car dealerships. Something like, yeah, he wins a lot on Sunday, but also they win in business on Monday. He sells an awful lot of cars. Like what? Why? Why did you have to say that? Not once, but twice. That just, you know, did he pay for that plug? Because I made this joke on my show. I don't think I heard them say "cookout 400 more than once all day, and they did pay for that. So <laughs> it was, it was a little, it was a little unbalanced. But yeah, focusing on track though. Yeah. I mean, Hendrick Motorsports finished one, two, three. Like I guess they did earn the special attention at the end of the day. Well, and, and, and I didn't think it was as like it was annoying. I get you know I get it, and I'm not. You know, former, you know, not former, still junior fan, but it's been a while. I didn't honestly think it was as bad as like when NBC did the Elliott one at Atlanta a couple years ago, where it was like, the siren is going to ring. It's 70 to go and Elliott is coming up to the lead. Like it wasn't the end of the world either. Like I, we, we joke about it, but I, I've seen worse homerism before. Um, hell, yeah, I can even my driver juniors, juniors last race at Daytona. If you go back and watch that broadcast, it's unbearable. If you're not a Dale junior fan. Yeah. It's just tough with NASCAR because, you know, it's not like another sport where half the fans roughly are rooting for one team, half are rooting for the other. And it's pretty easy to balance the coverage with NASCAR. It's tough. Cause you know, yeah. Hendrick probably has more fans watching than just about any other team, but it's, there's still, you know, of the 2 million people that watch, you know, 1.5 million probably aren't rooting for a Hendrick Motorsports driver that day. So, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's jarring. It's tough to stay balanced like that, but you know, to your point, Jared, like when they did the whole Dawsonville siren thing, it was just a race at Atlanta, at least in this case, Hendrick Motorsports again was celebrating a significant milestone. They ran up front all day. Like it, there was more to it. So, like I said, we joke, but if any team did deserve this kind of special spotlight from the broadcast, I think it would be Hendrick on a day like Sunday at Martinsville. But really, their entire team did good. Even Alex Bowman, I think he finished eighth, so they all was in the top ten well, in this one. And Bowman yeah. ran better than eighth. I mean, there there was a yeah. point where it, I think it was realistic that they could have been one, two, three, four. Uh, and and they were the class of the field. They were, and we'll talk about this in a bit. They were probably the only cars that could, I won't say easily, but could relatively pass. Uh, Byron came from 18th. Now, granted, a lot of the top 10 stuff came on pit road and through strategy too, but the team performed. And I, and I said the same thing Sunday night. Like the, the, the team performed, and that's the point that, this should be 
fired home with this whole deal is that 24 team and Byron, they're firing on all cylinders right now. Like if, if the only worry, I think if you're a William Byron fan is like, are you peaking too early? But even then, like we've seen it before, he does better later in the year anyway. So I, I mean, I I'm, I'd say this as somebody who wants to see some crazy, you know, stuff go on through the year and, and have multiple different winners and, and be at the edge of my seat. The 24 team scares me in that regard. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Byron looks great. Your question is, is he the best guy at Hendrick right now? I think the answer is obviously yes. Um, really, I just think Hendrick has a lot of great driver crew chief combos. I don't want Rudy Fugel's name to not get mentioned here because I was looking at the stats earlier today and you can see clearly in my head, I thought, oh, yeah, Byron, his breakout year was like 2022, right? You know, first year of the next gen. And then I went back and I'm like, no, 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 he. He was pretty great in 2021 as well. I think I looked up, he had 12 top fives that year, and that was just his fourth full-time season, but it was his first with Rudy Fugel. So the moment Rudy Fugel came on board, there was a sudden turnaround, a sudden jump in William Byron's performance. So I do think Fugel deserves a lot of credit um, for their success as well, but they have figured out this next gen, and they don't seem to be slowing down anytime uh, soon. Ooh, Danny's got a poll. Answer him. He does already. Poll? Poll? Yeah, poll, poll, poll. I mean, it's 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 tough though because you look at this list and it's like, well, Larson and Elliott have both won championships recently. You know, where's Willie B's championship? Here, here's the thing: it's still early, but right now the forty-eight is ahead of the nine. I will fully <laughs> say that is overreaction. Like, <laughs> I get Elliott's been off, but it's like the the, the okay, dude was in that top. Evening, it's evening out. It's evening out now. But, but I I really do think that that it is. Now, with the way that the the five has performed and the twenty four as of late, I mean, I, I did a, a video on him earlier this week, and I, I believe I can't remember the exact sample size, but I want to say it was like the last fifty four races. Um, I think I, I have the numbers here, but it was like Byron has nine wins in that time, and is just damn near unstoppable. I have it somewhere. I have a million notes. Well, the, the real question. So he's won three of the first eight races this season, mm -hmm. um, right? It's my math correct. Three out of eight. Yeah. So he is on pace then to win roughly 13 races this year. <laughs> he's not going to get to 13, but do you guys think he matches Kyle Larson's 10 win season from three years ago? Do you think he I, does it? I just think with this car, it's too impossible to get to that number right now. I don't know. Keep in mind, Hendrick and Gibbs have combined to win seven of the eight races. You know, and if not for you know a couple of inches at you know Atlanta, that was the only way Roy Suarez got a win. So I mean, I, there there is still the field is still very even. We saw at Martinsville how evenly spread out or not spread out. What am I trying to say? How equal in speed everyone is. There is still parity in that respect, but it's clear that Gibbs and Hendrick have bubbled to the front and are kind of holding it down for the time being. So like Byron's going to probably have to contend with Larson and Hamlin and maybe Elliot, maybe Truex for those wins. You know, there's, there's not, there's not that many guys up there at the top that are going to eat up a lot of these victories. So I don't, I don't think he gets to 10 chat seems to think he won't, but last year he got six. I think he beats that number. I'll, I'll, okay. So I got, I got everything pulled up here. Um, first off the, his wins, uh, at least through the, let's see. Yeah. It's 11 wins in the next gen era, three super speedway, three intermediate, two short track, two road course, and then one flatter, shorter track in Phoenix. Um, in the total next gen era, he has 11 wins, 23 top fives and 36 top tens and a 13th place average, which already for the way the next gen era looks pretty good. Well, starting in the, uh, playoffs of 2022 on, in the 54 starts, which I think is a good enough sample size to look at, nine wins, 19 top fives, 31 top tens, and a 10th place average, which means he's winning in the last 54 races since the playoffs of 2022 started. He is winning nearly 17% of the races, as in the top 10 in nearly 60% of them, and he hasn't finished in those two last two playoffs in 22 and 23, has not finished lower than 16th in any of those races. And he, he averaged sixth place last year. Like it's I mean, just a it's a straight line up at this point, is what I'm saying. Like at first you could look at twenty two after the inconsistent regular season and be like, okay, it could be fluky. 
Again, I'm covering my ass for that terrible prediction I had last year. Um, <laughs> but at this point, it's like it's irrefutable. It's just, it's just clearly ascending up. And, and the craziest thing of all is he's 26. That's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> he's 26 and he's already doing this. He'd be, I think he would be the youngest person on this panel because he, he was born, he was born at the end of November. And I know Jared, you were what? November 1st, 2nd? 1st, yep. 1st, I'm the 18th. He's younger than all of us. And he's out here winning cup races like it's, like it's nothing. Uh, um, I, I kind of agree with the poll on this one. Five to six is probably where I'd go at the moment, just being realistic. I, I, I would go seven to eight. I think I would. I think it's gonna. I think he's gonna beat last year's number of six. I, th- I mean, I Surprised think eight percent of people actually have said ten plus. I, I think he could do the seven to eight nine around there. I, I just, I also did get bit last year on Kyle Bush winning like three of the first twelve or whatever it was. That's fair. And yeah. and to to add fuel to your fire there, um, I think it's everyone expects Chevy to be good at the start of this year because they've got the deepest notebook with their car. Theoretically, Toyota and Ford, as they develop and, and learn more about their new cars, they should get better. Like I feel like Chevy is kind of at their peak right now. Uh, Ford and Toyota theoretically aren't there yet. So it might get harder for Hendrick to keep dominating races as we get into the year. So that 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 adds to your theory. I still think Byron's good enough to get at least seven wins this year. I think he can do it. I think there's still parity, but it's it's more parity within teams. Like I think, you know, he'll be battling Bowman and Elliott for wins, not Chris Busher or Josh Berry for many wins, at least if you know what I mean. But there, it just there it does seem like there's less teams this year that'll just jump up and get a win at least early on i mean we are almost a quarter of the way through the season i i've seen them run well but i can't see rfk jumping up on a semi-regular basis as they are right now and going up and winning races penske and ford in general are down granite logano uh on two tires is pretty damn good but (laughs) i i just do that every week I don't see it just yet. I mean, Legacy, we thought they'd pop up, and they've had flashes. They're they both top had... 20 in points. I did yeah. see that, which which I was like, oh, because they've been a little quiet. I didn't expect them to be great this, at this point in the year, but they had been a little quiet, both top 20 in points. That that tells me they're right on schedule, so you might have to watch out for them later in the year. Maybe later, definitely, but I, I just the, the regular season is probably where a lot of the wins, you know, just because of the sample size will stack up. But, I mean... I. Who who would be the ones going against him? I mean, I would assume Larson. Bowman's been fast enough that he might be able to Bowman a win away. I I, I we should use that at this at some point. Just Bowman a, Bowman a win. Bowman a win away. Um, JGR. Like who else is there other than like maybe a Ryan Blaney pops up when Ford is the Chastain. Yeah, Chastain. Well, Ch- maybe Kyle Busch. I don't want to. I don't want to like just crap on Kyle Busch just yet. It doesn't look good over there. But I don't want to. You know, he. They. They're still. That's still Kyle Busch. But no, I think consistently. Like if you look at what's happening right now, Hamlin's got two wins. Truex has led like a hundred laps like six times this year or something ridiculous. Like you know, he's going to win some races. Bell has a win. Ty Gibbs, we all think is going to win. At Hendrick, Larson's got a win. Byron's got three. Like, you know three or four drivers have eaten up almost all the wins so far. And it's mostly just been those two teams. So it's, it's, it, the series is very top heavy right now between Gibbs and Hendrick. I'm just hoping Ford makes some noise and we can kind of transition a little bit if we want to, um, because I thought Martinsville was going to be the track Ford shined and Ryan Blaney came on strong towards the end, scored a top five finish. Um, Ryan priest was sneaky. Good. He started mid pack, but worked his way forward slowly, but surely got a top 10 chase Briscoe got a top 10. Um, Joey Logano, you mentioned him staying out to lead all those laps. He got a top 10, Like there were Fords in and around the top 10, but up front, it was all Hendrick and would have been Hamlin if they didn't pit with two to go. So Ford still has a ways to go. I was a little disappointed in their ultimate results on Sunday. Yeah. <sighs> It felt like it's just that though it, you really didn't know. Like everyone was the same. Uh, that that's the that's the problem I have with like I can't judge too much outside of maybe Byron and the Hendrick guys because they rose above. But everyone was pretty much the same, and and I, I know we're probably pushing off a little bit of the Martinsville package talk on any of that. But I was keeping track because you know every time I do a stream after the race 
with like, you know, 20, 30 to go, depending on how large the track is. Or in Martinsville's case, I did, I think, 35 to go. Um, I, I'll just put the entire lineup in that moment in my my ticker and just edit it as it goes. There was not a, a single pass on track after the Stenhouse deal until the green-white checker. There was 33 laps, not a single pass for position on track. It just... Did you see um, the um, graphic that Auto Racing Analytics put out uh, on Twitter yesterday, I think? Yep. Um, he showed that he does this every week pretty much uh, for at least the Cup Series. Like, oh, if the last 50 or 100 laps had run green, here's roughly where everyone would have finished based on their median or average lap time. And most of the time, it's pretty spread out. You'd like, oh, Hamlin wins. You know, Truex is three seconds back. You know, it's usually very spread out. Not at Martinsville. He had like the top 10 drivers were all like clumped all right on top of each other, suggesting that that whole final run, like you were just saying, Jared, everyone was going the same speed. There were no comers, no goers. It was deadlock throughout the field. So, you know, they joke about it. It was the world's fastest conveyor belt, quite literally. What do you think, Danny? Yeah, no, that was uh, that's pretty incredible because he, he showed that one. It was like weird seeing just how close they truly would have been. But then he also showed, uh, for reference, the last race we had with the uh, Gen 6 at Martinsville, which uh, 2021, you know, maybe I'm biased in this answer, but it was probably one of the best Martinsville races we've seen in a while. Um, And I'm incredibly jealous that Jarrett was there for that one. I wasn't. (laughs) Uh, But no, I mean, that one one was good. And it was uh, interesting to see that, you know, how spread apart they would have been based on the median. Interestingly enough, the 48 was still the best car that day uh but regardless no i i like i like that account i'm glad that uh eric gave that one a shout out i'm I, I like seeing those graphics come out they actually they made a more interesting one for a truck series which we'll talk about that one a little bit too the truck series i think the way that one played out there was only there would have only been two trucks on the lead lap in that one and the there was going to be like one or two, one lap down and like three, two laps down. Everyone else would just be way back further than that. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, the thing that interested me about this whole conversation is what Denny Hamlin said. And he had said basically that every driver is the same now and not like they're all the same, but with the SMT data, with all yeah. of the different information that they get, they basically all drive the exact same. And then you have these cars that, at short tracks, can't you can't make a difference as a driver because they're just either it's it's too big of tires, not enough power, too much grip, whatever it might be. And I'm just I'm glad at this point that people I think are actually panicking about this because I feel like on this show we've been saying this. I'd say we've been saying this since like 22 start of last year. They're like this this I, is I, a huge it's issue. Been- it's been a topic since that first Martinsville race in 2022. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was terrible. I mean, we, everyone's talking about how this race was bad. That first Martinsville race was awful two years ago. It was way worse, I believe. Um, but I, I think what's doing it is we had three short track races in four weeks. And Bristol was so good because of the unexpected tire wear that it only further shined a light on how bad I don't want to say bad, but how rough the situation is at Richmond and Martinsville. Like I think having Richmond and Martinsville back to back, no other races in between just after an epic Bristol showdown, I think is what's sounded the alarm because in the past it was like, Oh, we run Richmond. Yeah. It wasn't very good, but we'll move on Talladega or something's next week. But because it was Richmond and Martinsville back to back, both weren't great. Lots of controversy. Um, I think that's why people are finally sounding the alarm. But I, I'm with you, Jared. It's universal. Like I, I had my little picket sign that I was campaigning with Sunday night. Dale Jr. ranted about on his show. Jeff Gluck ranted about on his show. Denny Hamlin ranted about on his show. Joey Logano on Sirius said, NASCAR, please do something now. Everyone, it's a, it's a cohesive, singular voice all yelling at NASCAR and Goodyear to do something drastic. So yeah, right now, something's going to happen. Like This is the loudest voice collectively the industry has had. You know what sucks even more about that, Eric, hearing you talk about that, is there's such there's so much that we know is wrong with short track racing, yet we do want to add more of it We want because we want to see it succeed because it has been in you know history – some of the best racing period in 
you know, not just NASCAR, but just in general. But so what? This year we've added uh, Iowa. That is a short track. Um, we have tracks that race similar to short tracks like Gateway, and Phoenix, et cetera. Can Wilkesboro you say you're added? Wilkesboro yep. is likely going to be a points race, I would imagine, at some point. Um, there's now, you know, the in the back pocket, Bowman Gray Stadium. Um, Auto, Club. Auto Club could always get rebuilt. Auto Club might be becoming a short track. They they want to bring back the Nashville Fairground Speedway. So we've got all these short tracks that, you know, we want to see work. But at the same time, you're thinking, man, I want them. This car sucks at them. Yeah, it's like NASCAR's pivoted. The industry's pivoted in recent years towards these short tracks. And now all of a sudden, you know, what's Kentucky Speedway doing? <laughs> you know, what's no. going on over there? <laughs> no, I, I I'll just I'll go back to what I know. You're saying no. Yeah, I, this race sucked. Like they're flat, simple. I, in my opinion, outside of that 2022 race I was at, this is the worst Martinsville race I've seen. It was again better yeah. than the worst one, but that's like you know polishing a turd. It's still a turd, uh, and, and that's the thing that I'm mad and I'm sad about with this whole thing is I've I've said how many times that this is. My favorite track. This is like my Wrigley of NASCAR. This is hollowed ground. You're not alone. You're you're definitely not alone. And the amount of people that I see being like, it always sucked. No, it didn't. Like this 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 track has never consistently sucked. Like I can never think of a three year span in my existence and going back to races I've watched well before even I was born that this track was bad. This track wasn't bad with the Gen 4, the Gen 3, if you want to even add, you know, it wasn't called that, wasn't bad with the COT. In fact, I think it actually improved with the COT. It was great with the Gen 6 outside of the 550 package, and even then it was still mediocre and you could still pass. This <laughs> one, Denny had, had mentioned this too. He was stuck behind Kyle Busch for like 20 laps, and it was Kyle waving him by was the only reason he got by him. I mean, it's <laughs> it's it's not even that it's horrible. And I don't think I'm overreacting. I know that a lot of people will say this kind of stuff too. It's just flat out unacceptable. And it's it's yeah. not just NASCAR that it's bad for. It's bad for short tracks in general. Because think if you're a new fan, one of those Netflix fans, one of those people that, you know, like an, an icy vert, you know, let's bring that name back up. <laughs> and you hear like these short tracks coming up, you know, Bristol delivered, but it's like, you know, Richmond and, and Martinsville. These are the type of tracks that this sport was built on that we need to to really build up. And then you see Richmond, you're like, eh, okay, well, maybe it's a bad race. <laughs> then you see Martinsville, and you're like, what the? You guys like this crap? Like, just yeah. think about that. Like, the, how new fans would view, and th and then they'll hear, yeah. Then we're going. To, we we've been uh, going for thirty years about North Wilkesboro, and we want to go to to the Nashville Fairgrounds. How big is that one? Oh, it's like right in between a Martinsville and a Richmond. Why the hell would anyone who's come in in the last three years want to see that? Yeah, yeah. Danny, did you see this comment in the chat? A Napa Racing fan said Bowman killed Martinsville. Last good Cup race he won. <laughs> I did see that, and I also saw someone say that he also killed uh, Richmond too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just nice. add, add him to the list. Track killer, Alex Bowman. He, that's what he's there. Let's for. hope. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. Hey, I don't think I'll, it will. But I'll tell you this much, though. You talk about all the fans. We're about to really test them because after two back-to-back, -back, you know, short track races like this, you got to strap in for Texas Motor Speedway. Texas will be better. I'm just saying. Texas will be better. I guarantee it. Will. It. it will. I. I the thing is, the last two years, like if you take like, tire problems to 22, Texas has been better with the next gen car than the short tracks. Wait, it's it's at least interesting. You don't know what's going to happen next. Remember the All Star race when Chastain basically like wall rode on Kyle Busch. I try to forget. Oh, yeah, I, well, I actually I do for I have forgotten. Danny will know this firsthand. I have forgotten a bit about that night. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Dude, that. that is Dude, an off-air story to tell um but <laughs> i mean it has i mean i i hate saying this because of how much i dislike and i'm not saying texas is a good track i'm not saying that at all um hell denny would say even the amenities aren't good there based on smi uh <laughs> but i i will say this i'm more excited for texas than i am for martinsville and i think that at the moment 
for the next gen it's better and it pains me to say that it pains me like it, it is hurts. texas gonna is texas gonna get its second date back from from north wilkesboro again it's gonna be 1997 all over again. No, this, this track this track needs just one date i'm gonna say this north wilkesboro like nascar test something whether it's more horsepower yeah. softer tires groove tires do something if it sucks at least you tried yeah, there's. A, we know we're gonna get super chats later, but Chris sort of said that in a super chat just now. Said, "Give me 750 horsepower, an altered gear package to highly discourage shifting, a tire that actually wears. All if the All Star Race at Wilkesboro, use it as a test." I don't. My only question, and I think I don't. I think it was brought up on the teardown. Maybe is I don't know if Goodyear say they do something radically different with the tires. Can they develop and produce enough tires between now and mid-May to make that happen? Maybe not. So I think more realistically, let's look at the second half of the year, you know, the second Richmond, the fall Martinsville race. I would hope we have a different tire combination in time for those. And I think that's where it starts. If we're going to talk solutions, because we've been doing a lot of criticizing, I think we should try to be constructive at the same time. Uh, I think you start with the tires. Yeah, it'd be great to up the horsepower. NASCAR doesn't seem to want to do that. And with a horsepower increase could come further necessary redesigns of the next gen. That's really expensive. Let's put that to the side for the time being. Bristol proved that you don't need super high horsepower if the tires wear out enough. So let's start with the tires. Joey Logano on Sirius today or yesterday, maybe mentioned groove tires. Haven't heard that mentioned in at least a few months, but we also heard Elton Sawyer on Sirius mention the first 30 laps of Richmond, which or basically groove tires, wet weather tires. So maybe there is some momentum building there. We could see a radically different tire from Goodyear later this year, hopefully. And I'd love that. I think we should try something extremely radical. And it's it's unfair for NASCAR to put so much pressure on Goodyear because this is NASCAR's fault. They're the ones who designed this car that is heavily flawed at short tracks. They're begging Goodyear to bail them out effectively. But I hope... Goodyear is receptive and I hope they're able to collaborate and make something big and exciting happen because I do the, think it starts with the tires. The thing, the thing is like we, we can, there are things that are tangible to be done. I mean, think, think of the gen four, this is entirely different style of racing, but think of the gen four, you know, when they went to super speedways, they had a specific car body that was different just for those, it, whatever they can do, they need to do something to make an adjustment, a serious adjustment, say, this is your, this is your short track car. This is what your short track car should look like. It's different than your other cars. This is what this one should look like. Uh, if that means that, you know, this one has some kind of change to it, different kind of tire package, uh, different kind of uh, horsepower going up, whatever it may, might be. I mean, even, uh, Think back to the car of tomorrow and even Gen 4 was kind of like this. When they went to Martinsville, that car was definitely way different. You saw that thing uh, high up in the air, Carolina squatting, basically coming out of front stretch, and then they slammed down when they went to the turns. That that car was definitely not the same as the other ones they took to the track. Well, and, and I get that the argument they'll say that they want it to be the same to save costs, but I think, like, what's the long-term ramifications of this stuff messing up? Right? Like, messing up short track racing for what? till so you get the gen eight and for all we know i mean if you look at the last generation of car they they stuck with the gen six for what nine years so can we really do basically a full decade of short track racing being awful i i just no. don't think that's that's feasible for all levels i would say like the tire is definitely the place to start but i would think that adding the horsepower too while not be making a huge difference right away like if if we're thinking of it as an equation kind of and it's you know basically like tire wear you know ne needs to to be the the prevalent factor at all these um and, but but getting there can be easier if you add that 100 120 which will get you to like 770 you know 800 somewhere in that range still not full on the way that it was back when it was 900 plus before 2015 but it might be a little easier to wear out the tires on and you won't have to bring as soft of a compound if you have a little bit more horsepower. Again, very simplified view of it. Um, but another one, too, is shifting like shift. It, you have to figure out a way to eliminate the shifting, because if you can just like downshift fire off the corner, there's no, like there's just no way at Martinsville you can move anybody because they have a, a basically easy shield to that unless you completely screw up. So. I feel like you have to go through all of these. It cannot just be one tweak. It has to be a wholesale swing for the fences change. 
I think so too. I think, I think, I think you're exactly right. I don't know why they scrapped that transaxle test at Phoenix in December. I remember seeing, I think it was photos. Maybe it was just a diagram somebody posted. Hey, here's what they're planning to test. And then they just didn't test it. They said, oh, they ran out of time or it didn't, it was going to take too long to swap it out. You know, so they've, they've, they've dabbled with some dramatic changes. They just never pulled the trigger ultimately. And I'm with you. Tires are first. I think that's, I don't want to say the easiest, but I feel like that's the easiest thing to change and to go dramatic on. But yeah, you got to get rid of the shifting up the horsepower by a hundred, probably doable. Engine builders seem to think it's doable. You know, try something big. Uh, I don't know. They, they got to do something because it's what you said earlier. They can't go a decade with short track racing looking like this, or they're going to, uh, they're going to continue to alienate grassroots fans. They're going to lose a part of their DNA and that's not great. It will, it, you know, you, you can't replace, both Martinsville's and both Richmond's with four street courses. That's just not realistic. I don't think that would be a smart well, business decision. And then you're just going to split the fan base all over again. Like, like you see, yeah, it's you, see good. you see the entertainment versus traditionalist trout crowd. You're just going to just pull them further apart with that because you'll have traditionalists and long-term fans are like, we can never leave Martinsville or Bristol or Richmond. And I think that's true. Like moving dates around, whatever, fine. But then you're going to have like people who've come in and who've watched 10 years of it being awful and be like, why the hell do we need this? Like this is six, seven, eight, nine, however many short track races we have at that time races. I can just skip. I just have to look at qualifying and I can generally know where they'll run all day. Like it's just, it, I, well, I'll, I'll end on a positive note. Cause JMH in the chat just said, you know, they NASCAR don't want to admit their perfect car is really flawed. And, and that's not true. Elton Sawyer came out this week and, it, and explicitly said the short tracks are not good. They're not where we want them to be. We need to work harder to make changes to make them better. The, the debate is just what are the right changes to make? I think at this point, everyone knows there's a problem. The fans, drivers, industry, and NASCAR know there's a problem. It's just what's a realistic change that can be implemented. And that, that's where the debate gets really interesting. Is it tires? Is it engines? Is it gear ratios? Is it arrow? I don't think it's arrow. Although I did see, I didn't hear the full clip, but I think I think Chad Knauss actually argued that they should put more downforce back on the cars at short tracks to uh, plant to to plant the cars to put more weight, I guess, on the car to that would help wear tires a little bit quicker. Actually, I could be misinterpreting what he said. I didn't hear the full clip. I don't want to misquote Chad Knauss, the great and almighty Chad. I will argue that Ford's problem might be some arrow, though. I'm I'm not sold on that thing. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I like angles, man. Martinsville, I just don't think it matters. I mean, you're getting down to 40 miles an hour in the corner. Like, well, well yeah, we've, we've seen Dale Jr. F- finish in the top 10 with a car that had an entire missing chunk out of it Martinsville before, so. I don't want to have to lose that. Like, and I, I just, I refuse to believe that Martinsville has just, what, what works at Martinsville has changed in the last three years. Right. It's just, no, the track I, has, it's obviously the car has changed. I, I am all for, and I know they won't do this because of the cost effectiveness uh, strategy and all. I'm all for using either Xfinity cars or Gen 6 cars at the short tracks. I'm all for it. Yeah. They, yeah, it's not gonna. It's it's not realistic. So I don't know what I know. I don't know what they can let's do that. let's give them NASCAR modified at the short tracks. That actually I mean, be pretty badass. Golf cart racing. Yeah, it'd probably spot or sit on the roof. Oh, that's a, a golf cart would race better at Martinsville now than the next yeah. gen. I, I'd race course. better. A foot race would be better to watch. At least we'd see passing. But well, we've uh, we've clowned on. I don't want to say clown. We, we've. We've, we've expressed our frustrations with NASCAR for a little bit, but uh, there's also another aspect of this that is frustrating us, and that is the folks at NASCAR on Fox. And before we get into this, I will just say uh, I was mainly listening to a lot of this race on MRN while I was doing some yard work, and I will just say this. As much as we talk bad about NASCAR on Fox, MRN proved to me they are not perfect themselves either. I, I heard I – heard, uh, them say a stat wrong about William Byron. They had to correct. They did correct themselves though. They said William Byron had not won at Martinsville before. He did in fact win there a couple of years ago. But that one also was a very forgetful, boring Martinsville race when he won that one. Um, so I don't blame him. Uh, but also uh, at some point they were just talking about cookout milkshakes at Bobby Labonte for a long time, and I'm like, yes, yeah, okay, but tell me about the race. Yeah, that's radio for you. That's why, well, I don't want to say this, but that's why, you know, traditional radio isn't exactly in the best place it's ever been in. But 
Now the Fox broadcast, uh, Jared, I'll let Jarrett kind of take over because I know he did a video uh, a couple days ago going into more detail. I haven't studied the the evidence. I just know my gut feeling is Fox misses a lot. They it feels well, like a Sunday drive. Yeah. And have we still not seen a replay of what that crash on the final lap was? Uh, RFK did they ever share a clip? Part of it. They put, so like, oh, t- so it was like team and fan footage is yes. the only footage we have. That's a joke. That's Same actually a joke. One. Yeah, I love the Herps crash, and I love them cutting away from the replay as cars are piling in. That's yep. that was actually that was actual malpractice right there. So <laughs> That's unbelievable. I got I got a few screenshots. I I wish I would have put them in uh in the studio before going live, but I'll just show I'll just show it from my phone because it, it it's clear as day on that too. Which one of these is the live footage, and which one of these is a just a stock video? <laughs> I would assume the stock video is the much larger one taking up 75% yeah, yeah. of the screen. Yeah. So I, I've again, have been doing this little experiment going back and watching old seasons. And I, I decided to watch uh, the start of the 2012 season back when they did side by side commercials and everything else side by side, it was 50, 50 of the screen, which I think I I'd be cool with commercials do 50, 50. They paid for that spot, whatever. Another one here. Uh, and this happened multiple times. Do you guys see what gear Martin Turex Jr., if I can get the damn light right? Yeah, it's like 90 or so. Yeah, they've a lot of graphic mistakes. 98th gear. And it happened again. It happened again. 98th gear. I'm, I mean, have, have you never watched the movies? Like, Ricky Bobby, he shipped it so many times in that movie. I remember that. I mean, I, I remember <laughs> remember that happened in Fast and Furious. It hasn't ended out too well for some of them. But, like, <laughs> it's just, it, it it's insane. Martinsville winners. Um, who won last fall? I'm just going to ask you guys this and I'll let you guys know who Fox says won it. Then we'll just Blaney compare. won. Blaney, I was there. All right, we're good. We're good on that one. Who won in the spring? Ooh, was it Larson? Larson. Uh, they say Logano. That's it was not, awesome. it was not Joey. Who I won in fall of 2022? Who won the look at what he did race? That was Bell, right? That was Bell. No, that was Kyle Busch. According to Fox. Oh, According to you Fox. know what? Now I remember that. Yeah. He gets one final win before he yeah. leaves JGR. It was yeah. very dramatic, very yeah. emotional. Who won in the spring? Who won that awful race that we were at, Eric? Who won that? Danny said it was Byron. I, I honestly forgot that. Uh-uh. But yeah, yeah, Byron. Nope, nope, oh? nope. Daniel Suarez won. Oh, oh who could right. forget when he, yeah. you know, smashed a pinata on the grandfather clock? I know. <laughs> I, yeah. Facebook went insane. <laughs> um so who won who won the last gen six race i was there but i i, I seem to have gotten struck with fox some, amnesia some, here some hack it was it was chase elliott i think no it was chastain oh this, he hail mail a year early i remember this was on the actual fox broadcast how are how did, who, where's the quality control I mean, well, the problem is they put out a graphic like that once a weekend. It's been mm-hmm. every weekend this year. There's been, and it's not just like, oh, you know, oh, you know, Byron starts 12th when he actually started 11th. It, no, it's like dramatically Wait, wrong things like sh- that. Show me that graphic one more time, Jerry. I want to see that one more time because I, I want to say something now. Yeah, no problem. Let me get back to it. I was trying to get away. It hurt so bad. So, okay. Well, I guess I had this for Bush too, but I, I, I for a second there saying that he would have won. Chastain would have won in the one when that, when that car wasn't even in existence at that point. <laughs> yeah, he won. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I mean it, it's just yeah. it's nuts. And so I went back a little further. Uh, Ray Dunlap had put out a tweet right before the 2020 season started, and honestly, I'd say at least when it looked the look and and everything like that of Fox has probably been about the same since then. And he said, Fox bosses in a cubicle in LA have made hundreds of bad decisions over the years. They massively overpaid for NASCAR and massively overspent on frivolous production. Huge budget costs will be evident this season. I feel bad for my announcer friends and loyal viewers. Now, of course the pandemic hit that year. So like we can't know for sure, but ever since around that time, we've seen stuff like remote booths. We've seen quality control be way off. Like, listen, I'm not perfect. I've screwed up in videos before. I will fully admit it. I probably screw up more than most do. Um, We probably all have, honestly. No, not probably. I know we all have at some point. But this is a professional grade, well, professional grade, uh, broadcast 
that is is putting out one of the biggest sports in America. Say what you want about NASCAR. It's still in the top six or seven most popular sports in America and sporting leagues, I should say. Like, it's just it's unacceptable. And again, I, I, I say it about the commercial problems we have and, and the the consistent announcer problems at different points, which I will say the talent has not been the problem at Fox this year. They've been doing a good job. But what which other sports fans put up with this crap for for a league as big as this, like like just in general, like not even just racing like, fans, sports fans, I, who I, puts I, up with this I, crap? I will say this: if you get if you ever, if you ever have a scanner at the track, this is what I've done at the last two races that I've been to. Listen on in my scanner, I've actually been listening in to Fox's radio, and and that you can hear obviously what's said on broadcast, but then you can hear uh, the behind the scenes of like producers talking to Josh Sims, let him know when he's about to go. Uh, during commercials, you hear, you hear Kevin Harvick, Mike Joy, Clint Boyer all talking. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't notice as much of a Mike Joy, but Boyer and Harvick, honestly, you get a whole other side to them listening to that. Cause they are actively uh, talking about, you know, things that, you know, they want to talk about. And I get so much more listening to them than I would um, like the, the truck series commentators, they talk a little bit behind off there in the commercials, but I hear the cup guys talking about uh, things that they want the producers to be focusing in on, which I find that interesting. But then when it, they go back on camera, I don't always hear those things that they wanted to highlight. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I say it's not the talent, the booth. I think the booth this year has been the best booth since Daryl Waltrip was coherent in the booth. Uh, the on pit road, Josh Sims, Jamie Little, I think they are knocking it out of the park. I love the 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 uh segment that Jamie Little does every week showing off the pit crew. Like yeah. the talent is not the problem in Cup. I will say the drivers in Xfinity this past week, Blaney and Centric, were were commentating like sandpaper. Like like it was so damn boring. Like oh, and oh, they're wreck. Like Ooh, yeah, you're not yeah. Jim Nance calling golf. Like it's a big ass <laughs> wreck right in front of you. Like even if you just go, oh, like that's better like people wanted to criticize dale jr for how excited he got for slide job slide job and that whole race honestly give me way more of that it's it's yeah. it all has to do in my opinion with the direction like the, the producers direction all of that that i mean do we have a close enough shot of this car no i think it should be closer <laughs> like it's like, not great it's yeah. not great i mean yeah i don't and they've improved that's the sad part they've improved this year in some ways, I think they've gotten worse. I feel like their camera angles and basic little, you know, housekeeping mistakes like stats are more glaring this year than I've seen in recent years. I think the booth is better than it's been in recent years. Um, yeah, there's just, I mean, you kind of summarized it. There are problems, and it'd be nice to fix them because millions of people watch the broadcast every Sunday. That's the primary way fans consume this sport is through that broadcast, and if it's not good it turns people off. It does. It absolutely does. It has, you have the ability to dramatically enhance the on-track product just with your coverage, your camera choices, your commentary. And I feel like more often than not, Fox drops the ball or just appears almost apathetic um, when it comes to covering the sport and getting the details right. It's just, it's like, they're afraid to go off script. They've got their pre-plan, you know, Toyota all outs and, you know, Burger King's, segments and what have you and it's you know they just they aren't great at reacting in real time to what's actually happening um and that's a problem that's existed for at least a few years now and you know hopefully they can kind of figure it out especially with this new tv deal coming up maybe a, a kind of a reset for all the networks well there's less races so maybe maybe the whatever money they put into it or whatnot they can consolidate into those less races maybe some of that xfinity money that they're not paying this year i mean I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the solution is. Well, I'm sorry. We do know what the solutions are at this point, but it's the fact that Fox, like Artie Kepner, I believe, is the the one that runs this, right? Is he is he still? That's the thing I want to know because if it, it, if he is still, then he should retire. I'm just gonna be real. Like I don't know, yeah. but I also I, I feel like there's someone else in there as well. I don't know who it is. So I just the thing is like there is an old school mentality. I think that is obviously still in that department that needs to properly look in the mirror, look at what other sports are doing, look at look at uh, all aspects of it and get your head 
out of your butt and just realize that there is an issue here that you need to overcome and find the right solution. Well, I, I can't remember if it was last year when he was on uh, Door Bumper Clear. And I, I don't remember – because, again, I don't remember the exact quote. Sh- yeah, I don't remember. I have to go back and but, watch the episode because it would mean a lot more now. It was basically – because I, I saw a lot of people, and this thing, like, between the short track package and the coverage this year, you managed to get Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, Instagram, YouTubers, all of us. We're all on the same page here. Like, we all are saying the same thing. And I, I saw a lot of people bringing up, and I want to know for sure if that quote, what the exact quote was. But basically, like, we we don't really look at, the, like, too much of the criticism because a lot of it just can be hate. And it's like, if is that really the case? Because I, I don't... I don't think it is. I think it's just frustration. I mean, it's 27 I'd, I'd say 2017 is when we really started to see the steep decline in in quality on the broadcast. And what's that? It's it's been 7 years of this. It's like there's got to be yeah. something that that you can take from what people are saying. I know that like the contract is out of date. Like it was signed in 2012. Like the world then is different than now. I get that there was no like, influencer then. Well, well, there wasn't even streaming then. There was a like a lot of the way viewers were back then fit the contract that we have now. But it's been twelve years. Yeah, that's the thing is if if he's still in there, they need to get younger, new blood. They just need someone who who more has a firmer grasp on the modern media landscape. You know, the media landscape changes every year, let alone 12 years. So much, it's not even close to the remotely the same. Viewing habits are nowhere close to the same as they were 12 years ago. So that certainly, if he is still in that position, I hate to call for someone's job, but he's had a long, illustrious career, deserves a lot of respect, but he should be gone. He should not be in that role in particular, if in fact he still is. Um, I and- will give, I will say this, NASCAR broadcasts have always been difficult, I would say, to produce because unlike most other major sports, you're forced to interrupt live action. Like there's no commercials during a play in football or during a pitch Mm -hmm. in baseball. Like every other sport has built in TV timeouts many times throughout the event. You're never missing the action. NASCAR, though, that's not in fact the case. So that doesn't obviously excuse the incorrect stats or the bad camera angles. But That's another thing. There's only one play happening in football. There's only one play happening in baseball. In NASCAR, there's 20 plays happening every second of every lap. So it is a difficult sporting event to produce, which is why I try to give the producers some grace. But when it's so consistent and when there's a clear night and day difference between Fox's ability to catch details and NBC's ability to mention all the details, that's when the criticism starts because NBC is showing you how to do it and and Fox is not doing it. NBC has earned that kind of grace that Fox has lost. Yeah. I think that like, that's why, I mean, NBC makes mistakes too. Like they're not, free of any and i guarantee no, now the we've criticized gone, them well i guarantee now the junior's gone like fans are going to take the gloves off because they don't need it's to become them. a little more apparent i feel like well, yeah you're not blaspheming against redneck jesus like <laughs> that, that they're but they've earned that grace to be like well benefit of the doubt they miss some stuff here and there i mean i i i think it was um asteroid 49 14 on twitter made this really good thread and that's where like i got the initial basis to do the video on Oh, and, I saw this thread, yeah. Yeah, and, and there's a stat he had. And I went back and, like, it's true. They've only caught 12 of the 40 crashes this year. Like, live, like on camera yeah, live. Yeah, they've and, and it's like the majority, they weren't on even commercial for. It was just they missed it. They like And, and some of them they don't, didn't even get the footage for. And that's, again, it, it, to me, it, it has to go to the ones at the top answering for it and all we hear basically is oh you're just keyboard warriors well it's like no we want to see you do better like we know yeah, you well, can do better it's a they have a mon- think about it. again they have a monopoly this if i want to watch nascar i have to watch the slot fox puts out like even if you go find an illegal stream somewhere that's still you know tied typically to the it's usually it's still the fox feed or something you can watch onboard cameras on nascar.com but you're not getting the full picture ever since they got rid of race view oh that's probably why they got rid of race view. It was so damn good. You didn't need Fox or NBC. You could just literally log on and watch the race view and follow your favorite driver and get the radio broadcast. It was perfect. But that's the thing is Fox has a monopoly. So it really sucks to hear them dismiss the criticism when it's like, no, we need you to get better. Otherwise, like the sport we love is worse. <laughs> like, like with great power comes great responsibility. Why are you dismissing that responsibility? Gosh. Anyway. 
I think we should move on, not and to take the reins here, but we are closing we on the first have hour. Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Ben East up here. Yes. <laughs> Just grinds my gears, man. <laughs> NASCAR turn. Uh, well, <sighs> speaking of TV, though, we do need to talk about the TV ratings for this one. And I'll be honest, since I knew it was going up against the Iowa game, I, fi- I figured ratings were going to be low, but could have been worse, in my opinion. Um, we had 2.191 million viewers, which – Considering that the Iowa South Carolina game, I think, got 18 million viewers of a peak somewhere around like 25 million or something like that. I'll take that. Uh, I thought it could be in the 1 million range, honestly. So I'll, I'll take that. It's down only 1% from 2023 and it's up 16% from 2022. It is down 5% from 2021's race. And the key demographic, it was 20%. So I mean, this this does tell me though that NASCAR at least has a solid base audience. That even with one of the biggest sports games of the season going up against it, they still held a pretty, you know, solid number in my opinion. Comparable to years past, and I think it would have been up had there not been that competition. I don't think it'd be like crazy up because I don't think there is as much of crossover audience. But I do think some of the NASCAR normies might have been there. Yeah. Uh, as for what you guys thought of this, the poll, uh, we had 15,000 votes on this one. And 8% of you all said this was a great race. Very optimistic 8% of you guys. <laughs> 25% of you said this was good, giving this race a net positivity of 33%. 44% of you guys said this was an average race. I would tend to agree with you there. 16% said it was below average, and 8% said this was, was a bad race. So there's 8% that thinks it was great, 8% thinks it was bad. Overall, though, this has a 24% net negativity. Oh, that hurts. First comment from MVR owner, though. Do you think it's positive, negative, meme, or mix of all of them? Um, Probably it's negative a, it's this a week. negative one. It's a shorter one, and I did not see how it turned out, so Danny will have to enlighten me on this. He says, Cody Rhodes is going to conquer the Roman Empire tonight at WrestleMania. Oh, okay. Well, that's just a wrestling thing. Uh, yes, yes, he, he did conquer him. Uh, and now, as for the top voted comments here, we got about 500 comments to go through. We're not going to read them all, obviously. But top ones from Tank Slapper says, after the race, Goodyear executives are probably thinking, people are saying, wow, these tires are so durable. I want to put them on my car. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Random here says, look how they massacred my boy. That's you, Jarrett. That's very. That's, that, that's that's how you're feeling. That's me. I'm Basically, just, Martinsville. They're just like, shh, don't look out there. Just eat your hot dog. God, I'm just there. Yeah, it hurts. Oh, oh, yes. We got a smiling friends reference. I love this. Oh, we were right there, man. Smiling friends, 2022. You, uh, have you two watched Smiling Friends yet? No, I've not. You need to watch Smiling Friends. I'm just gonna say this, and we'll get him on at some point, and I want to run this by him. I'm going to say now, Charlie on Smiling Friends is slap. Just full on. Same person. <laughs> you you will get it when you watch it. Um, Nathan here says, the Hendrick Motorsports 400 brought to you by Goodyear's 100,000 mile tire. <laughs> I'm not going to give Goodyear too much hate because at least the rights war. I just, I just searched Smiling Friends and it reminds me of something that Meat Canyon would draw at least with one picture I see of Charlie Brown. Oh, that's the, that's the that's the boss. Uh, wow. You'll I'll show it to you guys. Like their episodes are like ten minutes. I can probably show you like two of them after the show tonight. Uh, Farkle says decent race, great comeback for Blaney. Congrats, Byron. There is still work to be done. I agree with um, the work to be done part, but I, I I'm fully biased, so I, I'll say that. Uh, Thunderbolt says, rename the track to Snoozeville. Ooh. Uh, there's rough. a lot of people just happy for the one, two, three Hendrick finish. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah, a lot of people are, said they voted great for Hendrick being up front. So I get that. I mean, that's obviously not the majority, but I get that. Uh, 
Jesus, there's a lot of one, two, threes in here. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Um, it was horrible by Martinsville standards, says Prox Rocks. Let's get down to the gutter. I wonder if the gutter will be positive. <laughs> That'd be funny. That What a plot twist. Oh, my God. The gutter. Like, I can probably read a bunch of these because the gutter is just a bunch of single sentences or single word ones. Uh, You guys cool if I just, like, speed run some of these? Sure. So, go for it. Pizza says meh. David here says and take Ford out of NASCAR. Mickey Logano says mid. Jay here says rigged AF. Cooper <laughs> says at least it wasn't Elliot with eight replies. I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> <laughs> You're just asking for a fight. <laughs> I know. That that one's metalhead here says very boring. That's so funny. <laughs> Carter says meh, but it was better than last week. Are you sure about that, Carter? I said, uh, why can't Chase other fans just thumb the comment down and leave it in the gutter? The fact that there's eight replies is so funny to I'm, me. I'm telling you, it's like whether it's like online or in person, you just cast that bait out and you are catching fish all oh day gosh. long. Um, NASCAR McDonald's paper series says awful race. 2005. 2000s was way better. Uh, Supercharger boys says extremely boring. King Sally boring. Uh, Paza Steve says, wasn't great to be honest. Hendrick Racing, wow, says bad. User, blah, 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 multiple letters says, it's literally just mumble jumble, like AI generated. Boring AF. Uh, Cowboy says boring. Hank Harvick says terrible. And the lowest rated one from TRF Productions says, it was a bad race. I'm... The Elliot one made it worth it, but the rest are very underwhelming. Um, yeah. This is just similar to some of those uh, comments. I thought this was worth mentioning. I took a screenshot of this. Uh, Thad Moffat, a uh, friend of the show, he tweeted, Eric Eastep's stop motion videos are more entertaining than the Cup Series race at Martinsville. I saw that. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. They're just as scripted as the uh, Martinsville race was this weekend as well. <laughs> Put on our tinfoil hats now. <laughs> Eric East Jeff scripted. If you wasn't scripted enough, Bowman would have been fourth. No, nah, we need to make a hack, hack out of it. That, uh, that's why. Got to sell more T-shirts. <laughs> all, part of, all part of the plan. But that was the cup race. How the hell did we get an hour out of that? Oh, we, we ranted uh, quite we a bit about a, way. a few things. Um, uh, touch on the Xfinity race. Uh, big win for Eric Almarola, dominant day. That's that's cool for him. I know you could tell that race meant a lot to him with getting that win. Yeah. You mentioned the asterisk. You know, the, the, the His first win with JGR all those years ago was, you know, he's technically he's the winner, but he didn't cross the finish line first, more or less. And you get a grandfather clock for winning that one, don't you? Yeah, after yeah the Xfinity race, I think three. they all get him. Yes, that's exciting. That's very special for him. Um, that last restart, though, we joked about Fox cutting away from that crash. Was it the last restart that uh, Herbst and or was that was that what set up the final restart? I forget. Yeah, I think was? it was. I think it was the last because they ended under caution. I believe. Yeah, because it was. Yeah, it was. Herbst crashed, uh, and like Ellis and someone else piled in. I don't know what all happened because we never got a great, great angle of it. Um, the best angle I got was somebody filming in the infield. And half the crash was blocked by like a building. That, that's, that's about the right. Best angle of the crash I got all night from it. Yeah, there was some crazy uh, four wide moves on that restart even earlier because we had that we had that big stack up on that one restart where I think Brandon Jones was he the one who missed a shift? Yeah, yeah, and or something. I don't know if he what happened, but he stacked them all up. The whole damn field just crashed behind him like it was radiator destruction central uh, through there. But I, the the one that stood out to me was Carson Quapel. I mean, yeah, I, another good run for the late model guys in the 88. He finished what fourth, I think. Yeah. A week. Wasn't it a week after Bubba Pollard was sixth. Yeah. So that's impressive. A couple of impressive debuts. Well, and what I like about it is Dale jr. Is putting his money where his mouth is with it. Like he is. Yeah. He wants these short track guys up there. He wants to push them. And they're so, finding sponsors for him. It's really yeah. cool. It's great. I love it. I, I hope he can turn that 88 car into like, you know how there's like the all-star car that Gibbs used to have for Xfinity? Mm -hmm. That'd be just the grassroots car. I would love yeah. that more than than anything to see. By the way, what's up, Michael? Nice Michael seeing you. Michael is here. Hey, Michael. 
I like CJ Fastfoot's comment, or I don't like it necessarily, but I think it brings up a good uh, talking point. Does, uh, sorry, Sheldon Creed will never win a race if he keeps doing stupid stuff like that. Yeah, he went, uh, he he bonsai three wide into into turn one on that final restart. Um, did not win, obviously. Still looking for his first win. Yeah, he's been underwhelming so far this year. Like, he's been uh, up at uh, times. No, he's been, I would venture to say he's been um, bad. <laughs> when well, you compare... Uh, when you compare it to it, like Almirola is winning, Chandler Smith is winning, like uh, all the other cars are winning, Don Hunter is like, winning. Sheldon had so much promise coming out of the truck series. Like, one, he won a championship, didn't he? Right? He, he did. He won a truck championship. Yeah. How and he won a truck ago? championship, and GMSs didn't know at the time, but their final years, and then just, you know. Okay. He has a maybe bad is certainly too strong a word. Um, He's only led two laps all year, which compared to Chandler Smith has led 242 compared to even Eric Almarola, who's made three less starts has led 243. Uh, he's only led two laps, but he is 10th in points. So I won't say he's been bad, he's but he has JGR been underwhelming. Car. Exactly. He's <laughs> underwhelming. He should be, if he doesn't finish this year, at least in the round of it, honestly, if he doesn't make it to the championship for us, it's a down year. This is a bad year for him and, and that car. Thing is, he's he's 26 years old, and you know he's getting to the point where he's got to be at this point trying to you know f- land his way into a Cup Series opportunity. But I mean, if I, I I agree with Bobby Blair in the chat. Sheldon Creed is Robbie Gordon. A lot of talent, but not great results. With less, I think way less dead. flair, and, and and was uh, canned by RCR, <laughs> and very disliked by RCR at that. Yeah. yeah. I like, I like Sheldon Creed. I hope he does well. But he did say this offseason. I remember a comment he made was like, if I struggle this year, I'll just go do something else. Like, he's he's not going to try and force it. At least that's the way he made it sound. Um, he knows this is an important year, and it just has not gone off to as good a start as I think he was hoping. But there's there, he's, he's in the mix. He was in the mix at Martinsville. That's all you can ask for. As the meme says, get ready to learn real estate, buddy. No, I'm just kidding. He's not going to be he's not probably doing that. I <laughs> I really should get that Steve Phelps meme and just like pop it on screen whenever someone says that. <laughs> get ready yeah. to. Um, and then there was a truck race. Yeah, Christian Eckes is. Where the hell did this guy? So I looked him up the other day. Um, I didn't realize he was only twenty three years old. Mm-hmm. I thought he was like twenty five, twenty six for some reason. Which still would be young. Still would be. I would consider him a like a prospect, you know. But uh, he's only twenty three, and he is. I was trying to pull up his numbers for the year because he has been very. Very impressive. Um, obviously, multiple wins now. He's fourth in points. Okay, fourth in points. Led more laps than anyone in trucks this year, at least among the full-time drivers. So that's impressive. Most stage wins, just looking at the NASCAR.com stats. Um, but that's a McAnally truck, technically, right? Um, the 19. Uh, technically, it is. It is. Yeah, I don't know. I tested technically. Tyler Ankrum is also in a McAnally truck, right? Yeah. The 18. They're third and, he, and fourth and He's been points. looking like he's... He's really good too. Exactly. Like I want to say, oh, Eckes is the real deal. And he's obviously good. He's won races before this year. But I also I just think it's that team. I think just McAnally Hilgeman is yeah. is taking a small step forward. I, I think I think with with KBM kind of going away, it definitely bumped that team up the ladder with Chevrolet. I I, I will Maybe. say I do think that's a big part of it, but Eckes is the one winning the races and dominating and leading a ton no, of laps fair. and being the short track ace this year. Like, so I don't, I don't want to take too much away from him because I do think it's both, but I forgot who, who it was. It might've been uh, Jeff Gluck who was saying it's kind of, he's kind of become like the way that Majeski was on the short track. So he's kind of become like the Corey Heim this year where it's just like, maybe this is the breakout star for trucks this season. Yeah, that it would be cool. It would be cool if that's the case. But he's won. I'd have to look up his numbers. He's won multiple races a year for a few years now. My question now for Eckes is, what's his future? Because he hasn't won a championship yet. But is his his future like Ben Rhodes, where he wins some truck titles, but that's it? You know, he, you know, Ben Rhodes seems more than happy, more than comfortable, just being a contender in trucks year in year yeah, out. Yeah, I think I, I talked about that before. I was like, what's the end game for Ben Rhodes or someone like that? You he, know, I, I guess, I, he, I guess, you know, for every for every Raja Karuf that looks like they're, you know, in the truck series for a brief time, gonna you know climb the ladder. There is a Matt Crafton, a Ben Rhodes, or someone like that too. That's just yeah. you know there. Yeah, I think. 
you know, I talked to Atkins this off season and he seems just very comfortable with Thor sport in particular. I think as long as that deal is together, he's going to stay there. But Eckes, again, it feels like Eckes has been around now. He seems like a truck series guy to me, but could he quietly have become maybe one of Chevy's top prospects now in the lower ranks? Like Chevy has no shortage of great drivers coming up through the ranks between Connor Zilich um, you know, SVG with track house. I mean, track house alone has like half of Chevy's <laughs> development pipeline. Um, but I just know like, could Eckes quietly be in the running for an Xfinity or even a cup seat sometime in the not so distant future? Well, I, I would know. think that the, the place that makes more sense to me, and I know it's early to say this, I know that he might turn it around, but getting Josh Williams seat from colleague, that might be the option. Yeah. I, 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 hate, guy, yeah. I hate saying it, but Josh Williams has been so disappointing this season so far, and he could change it. I get that. But that would be at least the first one I'd think of. Um, you 25th, know. third in points with one top 10 finish is Josh Williams. And I was just curious. I, I don't think Junior Motorsports has to worry about this just yet, but Justin Allgaier is 37 years old. So, you know, he's still young enough to he could have quite a few more years in him but he's also you know been racing for a long time never know when he's going to want to you know just be done yeah i mean that there there will be options it's just a matter i think it's a matter of one staying consistent and doing really well this year but i think the other one is is probably you know will the right ride open up but I know it comes down to money, but if Derek Krause can get some cup series starts this year, I, I feel like Christian Eckes is going to get some cup starts in the future. I just feel like, I feel like if he continues to have a breakout season, I don't know how deep those Napa, that Napa money goes, if that's even his money or what he's got tied up, but I, I would not be shocked if he gets a cup ride somewhere someday. I'm just saying that if that Elliot guy don't work out that nine car, you know, just change him out for another Napa driver. <laughs> he's on the hot seat. Uh, yeah, you see a bunch of like people on uh you just go on twitter and look up chase elliott and you'll see some of the dumbest takes ever like it just just mind-numbingly stupid being like elliott might be in trouble he's on the hot seat and, like they're being serious about it. it's like it's it's entertaining as hell but man is it stupid <laughs> yeah the only driver hendrick who is and should be racing like he's on the hot seat is Alex Bowman. And then he, he has been driving like it more recently. And I think that helps him. <laughs> yeah. But I think I, I don't know about you guys. I think that might cover the weekend. I, I it, everyone go. says how boring it was. And we just talked about it for over an hour. We okay, do guys. that every week. We, we always say before the show, I bet we'll be done talk about this whole week in, in 40 minutes. And then here we are. <laughs> it's easy to, to vent when you're passionate but we don't have too much more to talk about for the rest of the show. So maybe it's okay. That we stretch that one out a little bit. Uh, but I, we do still have a super chat stage break or two. That's right. We do have a super chat stage break and whoever would like to keep up with that. I am ready to go. I got gotcha. you. All right. NASCAR son 2414. Appreciate the nine ninety nine from you. NWP Martinsville trucks, crazy rates, Xfinity, great short track racing. Congrats, Eric Amarola. Cup, Hamlin, that was a heck of a finish in spring 2010. 2024 shows how much passing cars is awful. Uh, Nas Carson, 2414, appreciate another 9 from you. Hey, NWP, any of you, including Chet, going to the Texas race, what 1.5 Texas race have you been to? I was at 2020 fall truck race, but not rain-delayed cup race. I also went to the 2021 fall Texas cup race. I, along with Claudia, will be at the Texas Cup Series race. Uh, they're probably only going to be there on Sunday, though. Eric, you're, you're going to be there, aren't you? I will be there all three days. Uh, I now live up in the North Texas area, so I have a home track finally for the first time in my life. Oh, my gosh. I only live 40 minutes away as opposed to four freaking hours. <laughs> so I will be there Friday through Sunday, dawn to dusk. I can't wait. Yeah, so uh, I, I don't know about Eric. I will always try to go to the tweet ups. So I will be at the tweet up this Sunday if you're going to be there. I'll probably stop chance. by unless my I'll schedule chance. prevents it. I'll probably stop by. Okay, well, as, provided that answer is true, um, try and find me and Eric at the tweet up this Sunday. I'll be here. Just go to, just go to Bob's <laughs> Twitter and find out when that is. Isaac the Jedi, appreciate the 499. Jarrett pre 2023. Byron is a driver people think Bowman is. Byron. So you think I'm a hack? Oh, I'm just going to go scorched earth for the next 20 years. 
Man, I, I got to go find that clip and just like like how Batman keeps kryptonite on hand in case Superman turns evil. I just have to have that clip ready in case Jarrett one day goes off the deep end. Uh, <laughs> I, that is that is the worst prediction. I've had some great ones, man, but I've yeah. I've had some doozies. I will fully yeah, we, admit we, it. We've all had some bad ones, but I just love that I can go find this one and bottle it up for later. <laughs> this is why we have our prediction segment so we can keep track yeah. now of our stupidness. Like, uh, Imagine if I made that prediction last year and then the accountability session came up be like yeah. about that <laughs> how much time do i have now uh you keep going a little longer i'll give you an extra minute alex love appreciate the ten dollars now that wrestlemania is done and cody Rhodes is champion instead of acknowledge me whoever's leading to end of pick points should say what do you want to talk about that's a good idea alex it's a good idea good idea Pit stop perspectives. Appreciate the four ninety nine. Would NASCAR be better if it was a publicly traded company rather than a private company? Having the police investors may force them to make necessary changes. You know, it is a private company, but in a way, they really should be trying to please the sponsors. That kind of is the same thing as an investor at that point. I mean, investors want to make money, and I'm sure NASCAR current ownership wants to make money. So everyone has the same goal. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about business to know what the right call would be. But I feel like if you have like a board or like, you know, multiple people to answer to like that, it might become harder to make big decisions like, you know, oh, we're just going to build a track inside the Coliseum. That might take years to you know, vote on I mean, and get approved. I don't know how that would work. Not, so. not to go back to, you know, the WWE like that last super chat, but I will go back to the WWE in this case. They are a publicly traded company and well, they had some serious controversies recently. They got rid of um, VBM. We'll just say that they got rid of him and uh, they made all the changes they could to honestly put on some really great products here lately. So, uh, you know, for them, it worked for them. So we, we hit time, we got investors though. mad. Um, uh, we're also we 107 just, away from the goal. So we got, we got time to get that in. We do need to get that. Let me end off on one more Spencer Purcell. Appreciate me. a member of Danny B super fans for 33 months. Appreciate that Spencer. He just says, and this is good for Jarrett made a video about this. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. But he says he is cautious, cautiously optimistic about NASCAR 25. Yeah. I haven't I think seen your video yet, Jarrett. Are you, are you optimistic? I I'm, I'm cautiously uh, positive actually like not just okay. optimistic I, I don't get me wrong I'm not going to be like you know buy the game so they can spend that money to make the next one better like I'm not falling down that rabbit hole by any means no. but but I'm looking forward to it me too me too me three <laughs> guys I just got an alert on my phone are you guys seeing this too about this, about this warning that just went in the area yeah, better it storms now than on Sunday oh my goodness yeah Oh crap! There, there it goes. There it goes. Oh, Danny's in. It's time for the lightning round on NWP. All right. Well, first off, we'll start with the Spotify poll. I made it easy this week. Uh, does Richmond get one date? Four percent said no. Ninety-six percent said yes. So <laughs> very lopsided. Wow. What should we do as the poll out. this week? I like. I always have to think of a poll at like one in the morning when I get it uploaded to Spotify. Like I'm just gonna put put everyone on the spot and by the end of the lightning round, figure out a good one to do. Okay, I'll come up with one. Uh, not a long lightning round this week. Uh, Cam Waters will be back at Kansas in the Truck Series. Uh, they announced this live during the race, which was like very odd, but I didn't mind it. Um. Kyle Larson set the second fastest lap at Indianapolis today in testing. We'll talk about that for a moment after this. Uh, and then to close out the lightning round, it was a very short lightning round this week. Uh, I do want to remind everyone to uh, join us next week on Eric's channel. We'll be live on his channel April 17th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And we got a guest. Chad will be happy oh. about that. We have a guest. Uh, Jonathan Ramos, a.k.a. IDK player, will be on. He uh, is the lead commentator at the Nashville Fairgrounds, host on our night in America. And he called has, a race at Bristol this weekend, didn't yep, he? He did yep. call a race at Bristol yeah. this weekend. And he uh, he also <laughs> he had the e he has an e-ticket coming up, too. I'll be on that. I'm dying at Alonzo's comment. Bro looks well-behaved. <laughs> 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 that was such a professional photo you showed of Jonathan. That was funny. Yeah, well, I, yeah, 
Careful what you say, or Eric Almirola will become the chat pick in every series, like Kevin Page. <laughs> <Yeah, Lange. true. laughs> hey, it would have worked for the, for the Xfinity race last week, though. It would have. Yeah. That actually might be the way to go. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he can't be racing this weekend, though. No, but mm-hmm. but he could be next week. But that's the lightning round, by the way. So strike Danny again. Strike him down. And that was the lightning round on NWP. He's just. I want to talk. Y'all, you mentioned the Kyle Larson Indianapolis thing. Um, can we get crazy for a minute? Yeah. Do you guys think sure, he's going to win? Wacko. Do you think he's going to win the Dindy 500? No. Uh, oh, come on. That's not fun, Danny. I think he has not a chance. Five, maybe, but I don't think he's winning it. Let's have an oh, a wild and wacky NASCAR fan segment where, we're, where uneducated IndyCar people talk about how their guy Kyle Larson is going to go in there and make their sport look like look like look easy let's do it <laughs> i i think that he has a chance a really good chance at the sweep actually i mean we saw how good kurt bush was we've seen other drivers go back and forth that have been really good before and if if there's anyone that can do it it's kyle larson dan we should pull them we should pull them I just to see on a poll because do i think necessarily he will i don't know yet but if he, I mean I get yeah it's early practice all that but if if he's already this fast and it's this early the only thing I worry about is the fact that he's putting the freaking all star race ahead of like qualifying and practice and stuff like that and to me I I don't get that like I do not understand like he's been saying that the, that he's prioritizing the NASCAR all star race over Indy five hundred stuff and that's just to me does not make any real sense but i'm uh i'm i'm really looking forward to this like this this might be my favorite racing storyline of the year yeah i i it is right for now, me as well the poll is uh kind of more neck and neck between doesn't win eight a race and wins only the coke 600 well here's the thing he's gonna be the favorite to win the coke 600 i believe like like obviously it's nascar and parody but he is going to be the favorite to win the coke 600 for sure so he has a real shot to win that. His odds of winning the Indy 500 are much lower, but kind of to Jared's point is they're higher than I think they are for most people who'd be in his situation. I mean, even Jimmy Johnson, he set some fast times in practice and during testing and things for Indy. And then, you know, in the race he was fine and then he'd crash out or whatever. You know, but like he was, even Jimmy was competitive. A past his prime, Jimmy Johnson was still you know, okay, competitive in the Indy 500. I keep going back to Kurt Busch, 10 years ago now, gosh, it's been a full decade Holy since uh, since Kurt Busch attempted the double, and he ran sixth, sixth in the Indianapolis 500. That sets a pretty high but realistic bar for Kyle Larson. He absolutely could run top five, and if you're in the top five late at Indy, I don't know, anything's possible. So, no, it, odds are he's not going to win either race, but I think of all drivers who could be in this position, he has the best shot at pulling off the impossible. I like, is there another NASCAR driver you'd rather see in this situation? Maybe Kyle Busch, but I would have said Kyle Busch six years ago. Right now, I think it's Chase Elliott. So that's exciting. I'm excited to see what he can do. And if, if, he, if he can pull it off, if he pulls it off. Wait, did you say Chase will, Elliott or Kyle Larson? I meant, if I said Elliott, I meant Larson. Um, but Kyle Larson, if he pulls it off this weekend, or shoot, I'm sorry, I'm off, off my rocker here. <laughs> Kyle Larson, if he pulls it off in May, May 26th, whenever that day is, he will vault himself into superstar status. We talk all the time about how NASCAR has no superstars. We've got stars, at least amongst the racing world. But Kyle Larson will go from a racing star to a American sports superstar if he pulls this off. I mean, I don't know how many people watch the Coke 600 every year. It's like 5 million, 4 or 5 million three, probably. Three, by big no, okay, it's a little three lower. Three and a half to four. Okay, let's say 4 million people watch the 600 and a good 5, 6, 7 million or more, at least in America, watch the Indy 500. That's also a pretty big number overseas. But if Kyle Larson shows out in both those races, he's going to own that day, a holiday weekend. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Kyle Larson's talent could be on full display. And that's, I'm rooting for him. As a NASCAR fan, I'm rooting for him because the storyline is fascinating. Chase yeah, Elliott's not a superstar. Certainly if you're... If you're like me, I'm you know more of just definitely more of a casual IndyCar fan. Uh, definitely, you know Larson's who I think most people would be rooting for from this one, just because of the connection we have with him as a NASCAR driver. I just I, I imagine how many people 
that are on the NASCAR side fan wise that are going to watch the Indy 500 just because it's Kyle Larson. And that, that's, that makes me really excited. uh, Like just about the entire hype around it. And if he were to win that race, Again, it, 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 I'm fine going on the reckless speculation bandwagon and, and just going a little crazy with it. But if he were to win that race, can you imagine the hype going into the 600? Like, Can you just imagine how hype that event would be? There would probably be like a Larson watch all night just because he, of that. Like okay. on Sports Center, They would be cutting in to see what happens. Here, here is my, here's my theory. If he, if he was to somehow win the Indy 500... You're going to have to see probably the fastest victory lane ceremony you've ever seen in your life for an Indy 500. Don't think a lot of people are even considering that thought. Um, but second, you know, before the Coke 600, they do all kinds of cool things. They bring helicopters in with, uh, with you know, army men uh, com- coming at- coming down out of it. Imagine the army is picks up Kyle Larson from the airport in a helicopter, rushes him in and lands there in the infield of the Coke 600 and out comes Kyle Larson to a huge applause in Charlotte. Thank Stone you for your service. Steve Austin theme playing <laughs> in the background. Yeah. There's a glass brick. <laughs> oh man. I not watch it. Like we say this stuff, we hype it up and he blows his engine in the, in the Indy 500, like lap five. And it's just yeah. like the biggest, just wet fart of a race we've ever seen from him. That's the, what we've learned today at testing. And I know that there's a lot of variables. Like just looking at the speed chart doesn't tell you everything, but the fact that he was second quick in testing today does at least tell you the car off rip is competitive. Obviously there's a lot of fine tuning and tinkering and work to be done over the next month plus, but off rip arrow McLaren Hendrick, that's a you know that is a car that if they hit on it could win the Indy 500. He's not getting in trash equipment, so it's exciting. It, it it's going to be fun to watch. Realistically, he could go top ten in both races. That still is a huge day for Larson and for American Motorsports. I think we gotta get David on here like right before that happens. Oh, yeah. Just we're definitely gonna do that. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure he'll have a lot to say. I saw I didn't get a chance to watch it. He put out a video today, and I think he interviewed Larson after testing. So I'd be curious to watch that. But. uh yeah, that was that was the fun side of motorsports. I think there was a, a little less fun part that kind of took the No, what are you talking about? That was still fun. Yeah, well I had fun. For us, but the headline side of it. <laughs> Danny, what you wanna lead me in? What what exactly happened this past week? I'm just saying WWE missed out a huge opportunity for a, another addition to WrestleMania. Because we had the perfect storyline with Denny Hamlin and Marcus Smith brewing this week. I don't know why they didn't capitalize on that. <laughs> I yeah, got the transcript gosh. if you want it. Going to need the transcript because uh, they, delete, they deleted the tweets. And uh, well, we'll, we'll leave it up to your reckless speculation on who decided that those tweets should be deleted. You can read them if you want. I don't remember how long they are. We could also just give them the gist. I think most people kind of uh. know the the vibe you can read it oh, if I won't you want. I won't read the last Marcus Smith one because it was just, well actually maybe I will and it's fun <laughs> so just let her rip uh well Hamlin quote tweeted the to kind of lead it in the Sonoma repave was really poorly done basically uh I think it was a sports car driver actually put it on his Instagram story and that's how it started circulating but it was a very thin layer and I was surprised how many people and I'm like not saying this jokingly are like experts at paving and were actually able to explain like what they did wrong. Uh, but basically they took like the th- a thin layer of the asphalt, the old asphalt off and just put another thin layer on the top, which I guess is why they say resurfacing rather than repaving. Cause NASCAR just rips the whole damn thing up and redoes it from scratch. Mm-hmm. Um, so Denny quote tweeted this with when paving on a budget goes wrong, North Wilkesboro will be next which then we find out through that that there were actually some issues at North Wilkesboro on top During of the, the sink- test. Yeah, on top of yeah. the sinkhole that wasn't a that was not a moonshine distillery. Um, to which Marcus Smith says, "This is a great post from somebody who doesn't know all the information. Ignorance on display for the world to see." I will delete this tweet when Denny Hamlin sends me a text or gives me a call directly, or NASCAR or Dale Jr. sends one over. Um, I added the last part. I was gonna say, I, I uh... yeah. Uh, Denny comes back with, you don't need to delete it. We've seen your reconfiguration record. Uh, Mm. To which old Marcus says, yes, we take risks, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. We've seen your attempt 
of the championship as well. When you have a chance, maybe you could give me some golf tips. This is such God. a this and, is such a mean so girl good. script. And, and just just pause right there. You know, it's it's one thing for a fan, a heckler, to say something like that, but for the sitting president of one of the two biggest track companies in NASCAR to go mm, like that to a driver. How? How how'd you let yourself get to that? I'm rooting for Denny just, this weekend. I just love it. I think that's so. I think it's so funny. I I, I mean, it's not a great look. I, I think Denny Hamlin. I think Denny Hamlin. If he just put the first tweet out, it would have been perfect. I don't mind some criticism. It gets people talking. Oh, you're you're right. SMI has cheaped out on repaves. Oh, you know NASCAR's invested in their facilities. SMI hasn't really the past ten years. If Hamlin left it at that, I would have said, hey, this is actually probably a good thing for the sport. Like some of these folks in power with all this money and influence do need to be called out. They do need to do better. Um, but then it kept going, and you know Marcus Smith making kind of an ass out of himself. I love the the playground dig at you don't have any rings, so why why should I listen to you? But what does that actually have to do with any? Is that actually a strong argument? No, it's not. It's just an insult for insult's sake, but it made it entertaining to read. And it gets well, there's there's a couple more. Well, there's two more here. The last one I'm not gonna read because it really isn't as spicy. Uh but Denny then says, Here's your tip. Let someone else run your business before you blow everything your dad gave you. Yeah, see, that's where it was like, ah, it's a little too personal. Should have stopped it when you were ahead, but Hey, still entertaining. I'll give him that. And then Marcus says, so proud of my dad, Hall of Famer. If he had a Twitter or X account, I don't think his comment would be family friendly. So listen here, almost NASCAR champion. You keep working at it. And one day you're going to get a big trophy. Thanks for the tip. And both uh, Marcus Smith and Denny kind of offered semi-apologies, at least for getting personal with each other. Though Denny then went on his podcast this week and basically doubled down on his actual argument, saying that uh, he and 2311 have invested more into NASCAR the past four years than SMI has invested in 10 years. So again, the perception, whether it's right or wrong, I don't really know. But the perception both within the industry and outside the industry, fans looking in, is that SMI is cheap. They don't renovate their facilities. They make all this money from the media rights deal, but don't spend it on anything that actually improves the fan experience. And I think I heard this on the teardown as well. Part of probably why Denny lashed out here against Marcus Smith is because SMI reportedly, allegedly, is one of the strongest holdouts in the current charter negotiations. Like NASCAR, the teams haven't agreed to numbers per se, but they're close to an agreement. While SMI is pushing back, they do not want to give up less of the revenue chunk. You know, the teams are going to get a larger percentage almost for sure, but that has to come from the tracks. And Marcus Smith in particular is very upset about that, at least according to the teardown. Well, uh, I... Go ahead. I, I, well, I do want to bring one thing up about the, the track stuff and like where, you know, where's the money being invested? Like when you think of the best tracks amenity wise and just in general in NASCAR, when it's pushed up to that degree, like who is it usually from? Like, like who is like just who is it usually from that has like the better facilities that has the most updates to it? Like it's usually NASCAR ISC owned tracks. I mean, it's, when, it's Daytona, it's Talladega, it's phoenix it's michigan it's kansas all nascar owned i mean i'm mm-hmm. going to texas this weekend it's my home track i love texas but since they put big hoss in they've done almost nothing to the track they've t- removed some seats they've added a small bar i think in turn two or turn four but that's about it they haven't done much and it looks dated it absolutely looks dated yeah and, that, and that's that's the big problem with this uh, when you look at a lot of these smi tracks they are average to dated at best like they might might have like new surfaces might have great racing, but I can't think of an SMI track that on outside of Wilkesboro that looks like it's been touched in the last 15 years. I just can't. Yeah. And and it, someone sent me a screenshot at Bristol because I called out Bristol in my video the other day and said Bristol's another track that seems a little dated and it's not charming the way Martinsville is or Darlington. And they sent me a photo they took of some of the TVs out by the in like the concourse by the concession stands. They still got these giant boxy old TVs from like 2003. I mean that's oof. it's rough. I- I will say, uh, here you say that when when they were renovating Nashville Super Speedway, uh, one of the guys who was there when it first reopened, he's no longer there, but he was uh, showing me they they had a bunch of those old boxy TVs from there that they were just trying to get rid of. So they are heavy. Yeah, 
Yeah, I I remember having to take one of those out of my parents' basement with my dad once, and it, it's like basically just carrying full dead weight. That's it. The, the fat back TV, Nick says in the chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wonder uh, how much did a Colossus cost? Cause I guess that's where their TV bu- budget went. <laughs> they did. I mean, there's an investment. That was how long ago, eight years ago, maybe when did Colossus uh, get introduced? It, it got introduced in 2016 because they, they only built that for the football game. And then it's just racing was an added bonus. There you go. They, that's something they, so they built big Hoss 10 years ago at Texas and they built Colossus eight years ago. So, so the last two time, TVs. so the last time those two big TV upgrades were made, me and Eric were still in high school. Yeah, <laughs> out of the groove did not exist. <laughs> this is random. I just thought of this thinking of Colossus. There's the rumor about the Braves and Rangers playing a baseball game there. What happens when someone hits someone so up goes up so high it goes right into Colossus? In eight it years it'll be fly, renovated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I gotta say, I mean, I think ground both, rule double. Go yeah, that's probably what they would do, or they just probably do a repitch or something, but I'll say this kind of going back to the, the subject at hand. I, I think they're both one. I think they both sound stupid. I both think that they initially have good points and are, and it's probably just that they've been butting heads for so long that Denny is just like going to take the pot shot out there. But I gotta say that I'm kind of more on Denny's side on this one. And I respect the fact that he won't back down to somebody who really could, if he wanted to, mess Hamlin's career up in any way he wants to. I mean, he has way more power in this sport than Denny does. Like, he is punching up. And I think that's why a lot of people are on Denny's side. Because NASCAR history, we just, we all, this sport has a history of their drivers and personalities just sticking it to the man. And Denny is, yeah. it, whether you like him or not, is doing that with this. I mean, I guess Die. the only comparison I could make this to, like, other sports would be, like, I don't know, a Cowboys player going at it with Jerry Jones on Twitter, I guess. I mean, yeah, Stephen A. Different. Smith has tried. <laughs> yeah, but that's about the clo- yeah, it's about the closest I can think, and I I love it. I like I love it. I think it's stupid. It should not happen again. It's like the hail melon of Twitter fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need a rule in place to prevent this from going down ever again. <laughs> I like. Uh, I think it was Junior who was saying like, D- you have the app limiter. Like you've been on for 30 minutes. Get the hell off. You're locked out. Yeah, or just maybe after midnight, it locks you out because that's when most of this went down was after midnight. What do you, what, what's the over-under on number of drinks combined or separate that one of or each of them probably had to to think about that? Because I, I don't know. I'm also going to go much. I'm also going to go none on Denny's end. Well, I'll bet they were sober as a gopher and then drank heavily the next day to forget about it. <laughs> well, like, I, I imagine I've, I've, I'm guilty of feeling this way. But I've felt this way before. You guys might have too. There's been times I've gotten so angry. I'm just literally not even thinking anymore. Yeah. Not, not that often, but you can get like that. And I have a feeling that's mainly Marcus was like that at that point. I'll admit I, I've been there before. I like I think we all have at some point, but like this was what Thursday into Friday, right? I think so. Well, de- this thing like I, now I have to listen to like, everyone's podcast to keep up on all of the tea and drama. Um, but I, I do remember uh, is it Jared Jared Allen is his name, right? That's Hamlin's co-host. Yeah, yeah. he was talking about how they have their basketball night, and mm-hmm. their basketball night is a Thursday night, and it goes really late, and I'm like. How much you want to bet Denny had everyone over for basketball? And then afterwards, like either he lost or he just something happened. They got him in a pissy mood and he saw that and it just sent him over the edge. Like, Could be. He bricked one too many threes and just had to take it out on somebody. Hey, I mean, it, he's had worse times with basketball. Remember 2010? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'll just say this. I was thoroughly entertained and. For NASCAR's sake, I hope I never see it again. Yeah, it was a bad look for the sport, but it did raise some important points. Like now there's an awareness of, hey, SMI, do they do get a lot of money from the TV deal? And what are they doing with it? Like there is now like, I think, valid criticism that's out in the open. So I don't know. Mission accomplished. Woo! Failed successfully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah hoo, woo-hoo. I, I have to go pee real quick. Um because I've chugged this whole freaking Stanley cup of water in the last hour. We appreciate hour. your honesty on this show, Eric. You're welcome. Um, 
I know we're about to get onto a couple of our final segments. By the time I come back, we better be awfully darn close to 400 likes, if not yeah, past I'm, 400 likes, or I yeah. might not come back, which yeah. maybe, maybe that's what people want. <laughs> yeah, Unlock people. Eric Eastep for the rest of the show. Please get us to 400 likes. Oh my God. I'm going to go pee and it, and and I'll be back. And if it's not at 400 likes, I'm, I something for, something for, bad for real, will happen. There is 408 people watching this show right now. We are way too low. I love this segment. I am not giving y'all a cheat code. You're not going to get me to go lower than 400 for your like goal. Uh, get us there. Come on. We need to raise those likes. We need to raise the support. Come on. Send it through the roost. Send it all your friends. Go on your alt accounts. Just give it a like. Come on. I'm here to preach to you guys today the importance of getting us to 400 likes. And I, well, okay, we're making progress. 340, but go faster. Dang it. We've literally made the podcast segment now. We have microtransactions. We're the EA of NASCAR podcasts. Uh, but but while Eric, hey, we, we, we've had we've had worse. Uh, we, we, we've had people uh, bid for the Indy 500 pick before. Well, we could do that again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, while we're uh, waiting for Eric to pee for 400, let's get into the prediction segment. I'll read off at least the rules, and then we'll go from there. Um, Thing is, is that when I have the when I have the rules up, I can't see, so I'll, I'll need Eric to like make a sound to make sure he's there, um, so I can do the accountability segment. Um, but to lay out the rules here, each host we'll get the like go off for a second, but keep liking it. Uh, but each host will make up to three NASCAR, motorsport, or show related predictions. Uh, we will keep track of them each week of the right and wrong predictions in our accountability segments. And we will also need you to keep the predictions concise, to the point, just everything like that. And time-wise, if you're wanting to do a long-term prediction, keep it within two to three years. So, like There can be leeway each way, but either way, uh, we don't need to go too nuts. And uh, Eric's still peeing, but we're 40 away, so he's it's working. It's working! Uh, we're actually we're getting closer. It has 367 on my end, so let's go. We need 30. Oh, now 32 more. Come on, 32 more. <laughs> Eric looks like a disgruntled dad. <laughs> He's like, that's not close enough. Can he hear us? I, I don't know. <laughs> he's just gonna he's just gonna sit there. He's not gonna sit down until we get there, guys. Let's go. <laughs> we just i don't know if you saw what i did danny but we, we're just gonna sit on this angle <laughs> you got a full screen. <laughs> i don't know if he sees it or not we're gonna do live commentary now on eric he is sitting there looking at us with disgust right now he cannot believe what you guys are doing. I like the Dirt to Daytona shirt, at least. That is, I, I have that shirt. I should have wore that shirt. Nice. I've run into a... Um, oh, oh he's, he's starting to think about it. He's getting closer now. He's typing something. He's typing! I, I've run into it. Okay, that's how I removed the pin. Okay, we're back. <laughs> I completely forgot how to get to unpin it because we never pin people on this show. <laughs> Where are we at? Oh my God, he really is going to wait. He really is doing it. If, if you want to unlock Eric, we better hit 400. We are at 377. That is not close enough. <laughs> Use your alt accounts. I feel there bad. There is 410 people watching. How is it this hard to hit 400 likes? <laughs> I, feel, I feel for the poor audio listeners who are like, go oh, for the love of God, get to the predictions already. Meanwhile, you know, there's someone who's just watching us on TV and it's like, I can't figure out how to like on this thing. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, Jared. I, I do. I forgot about our, our loyal uh, audio listenership. I hate to keep them. Keep <laughs> well, them. They just had to listen to me here. shout about you standing up and give commentary and you standing. Yeah, that probably wasn't the most exciting content. Oh, my gosh. We're like 10 away. Well, Let's go. Well, while we're waiting, um, um, again, I'll put this on screen for a second. The, we already read off the prerequisites for our prediction segment. Let's get to the accountability segment. Um, it was not a positive week for anyone. Uh, start with me. I said only one Stuart Haas card finished in the top 10. Two did. 
Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Eric said Ford would win their first cup race of 2024 at Martinsville. I really thought they were going to get it done. They would disappoint me. And Danny had nothing come off the board. Because I didn't participate last week. So uh, basically me and Eric were the only one whose prediction percentage changed. I'm at 50% and Eric's at 30%. That's it. Now pop the... Uh, that is By the way, sh- you guys just take five more. Go. I'll put it on screen for then. Um, but let's, uh, let's, I mean, let's roll on in. To, oh, that's right. I'm first uh, for the prediction. Get started. Guys, should I just go nuts with it? Should I just go completely out there and like try and swing for the fences? Go crazy. Uh, mine's going to be a little nuts, so go for it. Kyle Larson will sweep the Indy 500 and Coke 600. I'm saying it now. Write it down now. If I'm right, I want this put on a plaque. 400. Woohoo. Wait, Dada. Woo-hoo. You have- you have successfully unlocked the random driver of the week. And you have unlocked Eric Easter being on the show the rest of the show. Yeah, sorry. I had to go full diva there for a minute. That's a bold prediction, Jarrett. Uh, my first prediction also calls back to something we discussed earlier. I do think Christian Eckes will make a Cup Series start by the end of next season. Mm. I think that's the first thing that you're literally making us wait till next year on. Yeah. You're probably right, I like actually. It. I like it. I like it. I'm not good at delayed gratification. I want results now. <laughs> Going back to what we were just talking about, my first prediction is Denny Hamlin and Marcus Smith's beef isn't over. There will be another public dispute between the two before the end of the season. Oh, okay. Uh to start off, you know what? Let's do let's do I do long term predictions all the time. Let's do uh ones for this week at this point on. Texas will have above 55% net positivity in the poll this coming week. Damn, you almost stole uh, one of mine. Ooh. Um, I'm glad you did uh, the famous iceberg poll because I'm going to do the other arrival poll here. Um, But I actually believe Texas Motor Speedway will get 70% yes on Glucks. Was it a good race poll? Exactly, or 70% on up? 70 plus. Yeah. Okay, guys, we need to make sure because I don't want to be losing on a technicality here. No, of course not. So, so you guys have just said it's going to have a certain percentage on the two respective polls, right? Yeah, I said 55 or higher net positivity for Texas. Okay. Well, I'm I'm going to bump this one up. It was my number three. I'm going to bump up number two now, actually. But it's not quite the same, but pretty close. Mine is Texas Motor Speedway will have a higher net positivity on the NWP poll than Martinsville did. I think I think I think we're all going to get this one right. Yeah. I went a little more aggressive. I definitely went more aggressive, but hey, the the strongest wills minds. To, what is the what's the hell's the Thanos line? <laughs> the strongest only those with the something, strongest will. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, sound more like Optimus Prime. Um, that sound, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go one more for Texas here. Uh, this guy has led one lap in the last two Texas races. Ross Chastain will not lead one lap at Texas. He'll lead either more or less, but he will not lead one. <laughs> what? Okay. I feel like that's kind of a given, but <laughs> all right. Nah, I mean, he's done it in two. He's done it twice already. I guess. I guess that's true. Now, watch. Right, he does enough. lead a lap and I get it wrong. One lap. Let's, let's hope for the best. Um, my final prediction is that there will be a surface related caution or red flag during the North Wilkesboro weekend. Ooh. Like could be practice, could be qualifying, could be one of the races, but there will be a moment where, Oh, got to pause. Something's wrong with the track. That will and happen. Then Denny Hamlin and Marcus Smith will fight there on the track. I'm getting some criticism in the chat. Should I amend it and go a little more difficult with the, uh, with the pick then for my, maybe, prediction? maybe slightly. All right. I don't know. Ross Chastain will not lead a lap. That's good. Okay. You can go with that. That's I think, fair. I think that's more fair. All right. I'll do that one. He will not lead a lap in this race. There we go. Just so I don't get called like Mr. Checkdown. I don't want to be like the Kirk Cousins of predictions. All right. And now I will go with what was my number two um, one for this one. So Prime has a, a nice uh, driver relationship now with Kyle Larson. And I could see them 
working to maybe get some cool celebrities in at the track in regards to this and hang out with Kyle Larson and maybe make some kind of content with him uh, and, you know, maybe see some other kind of things come out with that. One of their athletes they've recently signed made a shocking appearance on Sunday at WrestleMania. <laughs> that was none other than the YouTuber known as I Show Speed, who took an RKO from Randy Orton. I predict that he, this season, will show up with a VIP pass and be at a NASCAR race somewhere this season. I don't know when. I don't know where. But I think we will see I Show Speed make an appearance at a NASCAR race this year. So does he keep it in his pants this time? With the, with the name like with let's the not name go like, that way with it i show meat <laughs> with the name let's like not go that way i hope he shows up at a race Real quick, it's, it, prime is the one with logan paul and ksi right it is yes i want to see kyle larson on in a sideman video like if you guys watch sideman channel like i want to see kyle larson do the irl tinder date one where it's like swipe right or left based on what the guy says to the girl Eric, okay, we're, I'm showing you that one too. Smiling friends and side men after the show. I got homework, damn it, chat. <laughs> oh no, I'm, sh- I'm just, no, we're sharing screen. I'm just like, I'm, I'm forcing you to see this shit because it's great. But the, I, I believe we got through our uh, three predictions, right? Oh yeah, yeah, it was just three. Yeah. Each. We nailed it. Woohoo! All right, Danny, it's your choice. Do we go to, go to Texas first or uh, Random Driver of the Week? No, dang it. We fought too hard to get the Random Driver. Let's do it. All right. Well done, chat. Time for this week's Random Driver of the Week. I'll have you guys turn your ca- – well, not your cameras off, but your chats off. And get out of here, chat. Yeah, I'll turn my you. camera off. <laughs> I need redemption. Last week was – did you see last week's, Danny? Last week's was not my finest hour. No, nah, yeah, yeah. I was I was in the chat, and uh, after if, when I heard those sponsors being listed, I was like, "Oh, if he just said DLP, it would have been game over." I I, should, then it absolutely would. I just I, my problem is I burned my guesses too soon. I didn't have enough. I didn't want to risk getting Tony Reigns. I, I was just more mad at the fact that you literally said Tony Reigns, and then yeah, that's what that's what I'm saying. Is I if I had more than one guess, I would have been more confident in my answer. Yeah. But, I, my that, strategy was off. Redemption time. That's why I, I made sure to um, I made sure to keep the poker face at that point. I don't know if you saw that part, Danny, but I was like, keep poker face. Like we definitely like I I can't give I cannot give this away with oh, just I, a smile. I, I could tell I could tell you were fighting real hard with it. I was I was. I love how they're already <laughs> guessing in the chat. Like they're already what? guessing. Have they gotten it right yet? No. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's get Let's this roll. Going. Yep. This random driver was born and raised in Virginia. Any guesses yet? A lot of, opens a lot of doors, potentially. This random driver was one of the winningest in the NASCAR convertible division. Oh, so we're going real way old back. Old as dirt. <laughs> uh, this random driver blew millions of his family fortune for his partying addiction. Oh boy. I have an early guess, but I'm not going to burn it yet. Chat does too. I've seen at least one person that check it, right? Oh wow. This random driver was the first multi-time winner of NASCAR's most popular driver award. Mm. God, how old how long does that award go back? A while. Always, always. This random driver's birthday was 100 years ago this Friday, April 12th, 1924. We are old as dirt. Oh, I'm just I'm trying to think of how old these guys were. Oh, okay. One of the nicknames this random driver managed to acquire was the Blonde Blizzard of Virginia for how fast he was on the track. Can't say recall hearing that one. Yeah, that's a new one. I've not heard that name. This random driver and his buddy, Joe Weatherly, were nicknamed the Gold Dust Twins. Hmm. Okay. I'm starting to think my initial guess was probably wrong. This random driver 
died in Foxitani, Pennsylvania. Not the the groundhog got him. No, no, no. The groundhog <laughs> didn't get him. A plane did. Oh, this random That's driver's dark. death was in an airplane accident. He was flying. It's the same accident that killed golfer Clarence King, who he was flying. Oh, oh. So was it? Wait. So was he, I'm sorry. Did I miss that? So was this driver also a pilot? Yes. Oh. Hmm. Any guesses? No. The chat's the chat's clowning y'all. Have they already gotten it? Yeah, they got it a while ago. Oh damn! Then Google okay. it. <laughs> no, this... I I could see if you know the story. Like I feel like there's some of these are specific enough that if you really are like a true historian of the sport, of which I am not, uh, I, 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 I focus on a lot of history stuff, but I don't usually focus that far back. Yeah, this is pretty far back. I mean, 1912. You said they were born. Wait, when did mm-hmm. you say they were born? Uh, they were born April 12th, 1924. I so. okay. I think. I have a guess, mm-hmm. and I and I get this family mixed up all the time. I'm going to go Tim Flock. You're not right. Damn it. And I'm keeping track now of who has their guesses because I, I, I made this mistake last time and was like, oh, you got like one or two. Um, I think Tim Flock might have been from Georgia. This random driver's first NASCAR win came at the Langhorn Speedway, one of the most deadly tracks in NASCAR history. One of y'all did a good video on that, didn't y'all? Um, I think it was slap. Maybe I mean, slap. I did. I did a video kind of covering it, but not in depth. I like slap slap slapped it. it in depth. I haven't seen it in a while. That's probably the one I saw. This random driver was the first NASCAR winner at the Rockingham Speedway. Oh. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, I just don't know where any of these people were from. I feel like everyone in the 1950s or whenever were just born in North Carolina. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, this random driver was an early designer of a telecommunication satellite that would become Telstar, which would lead to satellite television. So basically. This person had a much better career outside of NASCAR, it sounds like. To a degree. Any guesses? I'm confident. I'm not, but I'm not sure I'm going to get any more sure. <laughs> we'll see. I'll keep going. This random driver served in the U.S. Navy during World War II and would run tires across Europe. I have feeling Jared's winning this one. Uh, I don't know. I got a good amount. I'm saving some of the better ones for later. I have a lot of guesses. I just don't want to burn them. I, that's what got me into trouble last week. I, I don't have any competent guesses. So I'm, I'm like Eric. I'm, I'm not. I'm not wasting them. This random driver was once in a fight with Lee Petty after he spun Petty out for a win. Allegedly, Petty had hit him with a rolled up newspaper that contained a torque wrench inside. Oh my gosh! Oh, I think I've heard this story. Damn it! Who is that? I don't know who it is. It could have been any of them. Ha! Ah. Nothing? No. This random driver was one of the, while maybe not officially, founding members of NASCAR. He was in the meeting at the Streamline Hotel with Big Bill France. Dang. No, I'll keep going. I'll keep going, but I'm like starting to narrow it down, I feel like. I feel like it's on the tip of my tongue. This random driver was listed in both the 50 and 75 greatest drivers list in NASCAR history. That should narrow it down a little. Yeah, I, mm, I just don't know. I only get two more guesses, and I don't want to get it mm, wrong. Okay. I don't wish I knew where these people were from. This random driver is a NASCAR Hall of Famer. I'm going to – oh, I think he's in the Hall of Fame. No, I don't know. Hold on. No, I don't know. Should I start I'm gonna, I'll I'll do a guess. Right. I'll go Buck Baker. Wrong. And I'll I'll do a guess just to have one out there. Ned Jarrett. Wrong. Actually, this random driver, this is another clue. Random driver actually did not like Ned Jarrett for taking the dirt off Hickory. Mm. 
mm. said that the only reason he did it was, quote, because he couldn't drive dirt for shit. <laughs> All right. Um, this random driver was one of the co-creators and founders of the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Ooh. Anything? I swear we need to have music in it so I don't have to talk the whole time for the audio listener so that at least I know the segment's still going. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> just muting us. Keep, keep going, keep going. This random driver was inducted to the NASCAR Hall of Fame in the class of 2016. Okay, so it's like a 50 year. I don't want to burn my last guess. I've had this guy in the tip of my tongue for a while now. I don't think he's from Virginia, though. But the chat got it so early that I think I think it's Curtis Turner. It is. There you go. So there were only actually a few more, and because this is my favorite old school racer, I want to read them off. So he was banned from NASCAR for trying to form a NASCAR driver's union. That would have gave it away. And then reinstated uh, later on. And the big one that I have, yeah, they had Curtis Turner like immediately, like within two guesses. Yeah. Well, that's why I was like, okay, maybe Phlox, maybe like Buddy or Buck Baker. I was trying to think like it had to be somebody well-known. It's not going to be someone super ab- abstract or unknown from the early days. So I was like, okay. like when you, And then when you said Hall of Famer, I'm like, okay. And then I was trying to remember Charlotte. When you said the Charlotte Motor Speedway thing, that's when I was like, I think it has to be Curtis Turner. So the the, the big one that I was holding out on is that Curtis Turner was the first NASCAR driver to grace the cover of Sports Illustrated on February 26, 1968. And I have that issue. Oh, uh, yeah. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. That's actually insane. So it looks like Speed Racer. It looks like the Mach 5. Let me see if it looks better if I... Uh, I'm going to put myself fully on screen on this one. Um, if I'm, Yeah, I'll pin myself on this one. So, yeah, this is the... This is the cover of it. And you want to know the funniest part is if you... You want to know how old this is? Look at the back. It's a cigarette ad. Nice. <laughs> so remove the pin now so i'm not on screen for everyone too much but yeah i curtis turner like if you if people in the chat haven't looked uh up him before or if you guys don't know much about him other than what i said today like look up curtis turner slaps video does a good job this yep. article actually has stuff that what that i haven't like i never even knew about him in here because he was also nicknamed pops Cause he, and it wasn't because he was like a fatherly figure or anything. It's cause at the local short tracks, what he'd do is like, he was, he was known as pops because he would just keep popping you in the back until you move the hell out of the way or he moved you out of the racetrack. Um, it's a good nickname. I love Curtis Turner, man. That dude's a freaking badass. but that was the random driver of the week. There you go. I already got next week picked out. So that, that one should be fun. Very nice. And we will get there, chat, right? We will? I think so. Um, I will fully admit, Dan, you might have to lead into the uh, into the Texas segment here, the preview, because I'm going to pull an Eric. Cause now i got to go to the bathroom because I've been drinking all this tea and water. I know. All right. That is, that, is, that is fine of me. We are going to Texas Motor Speedway, and by we, I mean me, Claudia, and Eric will be at Texas Motor Speedway this weekend. Uh, find my hat. Yeah, yeah. Find your find your hat. I've actually got a belt buckle that I need to wear this weekend that I forget when I got it. It's an Ally belt buckle, Ally Racing belt buckle. I need to wear that this weekend. Random, cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Cup Series race is oddly similar to what the Cup Series race was named at the last Texas race we were at, Circuit Americas. It is the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive Four Hundred. It's a 267-lap race. Your stages are broke up in 80 laps stage one, 85 laps stage two, and 102 laps in stage number three. The start time for this is 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, 2.30 p.m. local time, and central time out there in Texas. You can catch this race on FX on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. 
and radio coverage, much like all the other SMI tracks, is with the Performance Racing Network, and you can also catch it on Sirius XM and the NASCAR app will also give you radio coverage. Weather for this weekend, for according to the National Weather Service, Sunday we'll see a high temperature of 83 degrees with mostly sunny skies, only a 6% chance of rain. The defending winner of this race is William Byron. As for the Xfinity Series, it is the Andes Frozen Custer 300. Man, some Andes sure does sound good right now. The This is a 200-lap race. The stages are broke up into 45 laps in stages one and two. And stage three is 110 laps. That race is scheduled to start at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 12.30 p.m. Central Time out there in Texas. You're going to catch this one on FS1 and the Fox Sports app with radio coverage on the Performance Racing Network, Sirius XM, and the NASCAR app. Weather for Saturday, 81 degrees, partly cloudy and windy, with only a 3% chance of rain. The defending winner of this race is John Hunter Nemechek. He is not racing in this weekend, though. Uh, the Truck Series race, that'll be Friday night. That is the SpeedyCash.com 250. This is a 167-lap race. 40 laps in, in stage one and two, 87 laps in stage three. The start time for this is late, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, 7.30 p.m. Central time on Friday night. Catch this one on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Radio coverage, exclusive radio coverage for the truck series is on MRN with Sirius XM and the NASCAR app also offering you radio coverage as well. For Friday, we'll have 80 degrees as the high, mostly sunny conditions and a 3% chance of rain. The defending winner of this race is Carson Hosevar, also not racing in this race once again. Now, in terms of the pick points, Jarrett is your current reigning undisputed NWP WWE champion of the pick points. <laughs> Acknowledge so, him. So NWP, uh, what do you want to talk about? He has 134 po uh, points right now with one cup series win, three Xfinity series wins and two truck series victories. Give him five total victories this season. I am in second place. Minus 21 with one win in each of the three series. Three wins total for me. Chat, you are second right behind me at minus 23 to Jarrett with only one Cup Series victory so far. Eric, you are in fourth with a deficit of minus 32, and you have one Xfinity Series win so far this season. Still leading. Thank now, God. Who do we think is going to win in the truck series? Eric, you uh, start us off. Of all weeks to get first pick, I don't have a strong opinion in any of these races. Although, to start with the truck series, if I remember correctly, he didn't win the last mile and a half race he ran. No, Raja Karuth got this win. But I feel it would be foolish to bet against kyle bush so i'm taking kyle bush to win on friday night i know it's not fun it'll probably blow up in my face but i gotta make up points i'll bet on the future hall of famer that's pretty fair i actually didn't even have my top three because because he hasn't been doing the best but who's the chat got chat Sanchez, who is yeah, my second they're, pick. They're, they're taking my number one pick. They took Sanchez off the board for me. Give them number two, Sanchez. So, therefore, I will take my number two pick, Heim time. Corey Heim. Wow. So, you're giving me my number two pick. Ty Majeski. He's been really consistent at the mile and a half and at Texas. Okay, that might I think be a sneaky th pick. this might be the most even week we have on the truck series side of it. Yeah, this I was definitely a hard one to do. I, I just the reason I want Sanchez number one is because man, he was almost going to win that one, but he kind of got kind of got wrecked there at the end of that one. I remember that. Now the Xfinity series, the Xfinity series. Eric, who will win the Xfinity series? This is a tough one. I want to pick Cole Custer because he's got that fun, festive Andy's frozen custard car. It's cold custard. The race is named after him, but I think it'll be a Gibbs car. I think it'll be Chandler Smith. 
Chandler. Chandler. That was my number two pick gone. Same here. What's the chat got? Because I think they were going Chandler at first. Chat uh, hasn't really caught up yet. They're still, they're still saying a lot of number two, but I doubt they're talking about the three. Custer. Okay, now they're coming in. It's all guy in Custer. I'm, yeah, I'm going to pull here. I see very split between Custer and the seven of Allgaier. And while you're doing that, so, I'm going to have another bite of my lasagna. lasagna. I thought you went to the, the bathroom, Jared. And you went, <laughs> hey, you've been in my stop. You've been in my place. You know that the bathroom's right next to the kitchen. And... Uh, I thought you were going to say, you know where my, oh, well, that, that's, that's a crispy looking lasagna yeah. right there. It looks good. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's 500 calories too. I'm, I'm staying healthy while I eat my lasagna. Mm. So I've got a poll that says, "Answer me now." And they I, I are think, answering you pretty quickly. Yeah, I think we know what their answer is. Well, since uh, since my pick isn't either of those, I'll go ahead and say mine. I am going with Sammy Smith. Really? Ooh, that's yeah. an interesting one. I, I bit I bit that apple twice last week, and it didn't work too well. Yeah, I I will I will eat grilled chicken next week, Peter. What is happening to the the poll right now? Yeah, it's getting so even all of a sudden. What the? Why does this always happen? <laughs> I know who I want them to pick. Cause... All right, chat. I think we'll just have to count down, Danny, like ten, nine, eight, seven, and just hit go and see what it is. Yeah, actually, actually, uh, end. Please pick <laughs> no, you too. No warning. Oh my oh, god! It's 50, 50. It's exactly. We got to do it again. 50. We got to do it again. Has that ever happened? No. Usually YouTube like gives one the edge, but they 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 probably evenly had if, if it's 128 votes, they probably had the exact same number of votes and YouTube couldn't round up or down. Yeah. That's nuts. All right. So, I'm going to count to 30 and when I get there, I'm clicking the end poll button. That's wild. Two, three, four, five, six. I already got more votes seven, than last time. Eight, <laughs> nine, ten, eleven, twelve, <laughs> and Sna- fourteen. Snappy's 15, like everyone vote the exact 16, opposite. <laughs> Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, hide and seek. twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. You get all guy. Damn it. That was my number one. Mm. Well, I guess I'll go with my number two, Cole Custer. All right. I would <laughs> be shocked if nobody took him. And now to the cup race. Who's going to suck? Uh, I'm not feeling RCR. Did y'all see Austin Dillon last week? I know he's uh, you know run up front in this race in the past, but I don't, I, I don't see it. Austin Dillon. Who's Jack got? Um, they going Jimmy. Are they going Jimmy Johnson? Oh shoot! Jimmy's um, racing. That's right. It, yeah. They ain't going him. I'm. I've seen more for the sixteen than anything. Who's in the sixteen this week? I don't even know. Is it Ty um, Dillon? Probably. <laughs> is it Derek Krause? Is it? It's not Josh Williams, is it? No. Hold on. Let me see who's in the sixteen. Is Austin yeah, it's, 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 it's Ty Dillon. Ah, those are those you assholes. <laughs> hey, right, give, give him Ty Dillon. Dillon brothers. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean in at RCR camp, but I'm going to say it's actually Kyle Busch who doesn't do mm. good for his standards. Danny, I think there's a reason why you and me are one and two in points right now. We think the same here. Yeah. I'm going Kyle yeah. Busch. Yep. But if I would have um, known, if I would have thought to look, I would have said Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> it's a dark horse. You know what? I'm going to have some fun here. Jimmy Johnson, Ooh. my dark horse. He was moving forward in the Coke 600 last year um, before bad things happened, but he started out back, and I think he got up to like 23rd just on pace alone, making moves, making passes. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think Jimmy will probably crash at some point. I don't think he's finished a, a race in the next-gen car yet. He'll probably crash at some point. Turns one and two are sketchy as hell, but I had to sit up in the stands and watch Jimmy Johnson win numerous races at Texas Motor Speedway <laughs> in his prime. He's obviously not going to win this weekend, but a top 15, I could see him being like 14th. Yeah, but in a legacy Toyota. Hey, 
I think he could get a top 15. He finished the 500 this year, did he? He might have. I don't remember. Did he? Did he? Did he? He barely made the 500. <laughs> yeah. Did he? Uh, I have to go oh, look. Oh, gosh. No, no, moving check on. that again. Uh, who does the chat have? I, I haven't seen any clear they, winner here. Uh, looks like they're going on Bubba, actually. Okay. Yeah. yeah that seems yeah. where they're going. I, I see a lot of 23, so give him Bubba for the underdog. Who you got, Danny? Um, He did finish multiple laps down, apparently. I guess that counts. I guess that's not a DNF. Hang so. the banner. Yeah. Heck, he won a truck series. Give me Carson Hosevar. Ooh, Ooh, I like that. That's a good pick. Nice. And uh, one second, because I'm writing that down. But I want to double check to make sure. Um, but I believe he just announced this week. I think he's having. I know he's having at least one more. But I think he's having twins. Chase Briscoe. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go Chase Briscoe this week for my underdog pick. Very nice. And now, correct. Who is going to win at Texas this weekend in the Cup Series? Mm -hmm. We just talked about him a couple of segments ago. I looked, he's the odds on favorite, probably for good reason. Kyle Larson. That was my number one. That was my mm -hmm. number two. Who's the chat got? Well, they were trying to go for the five, but they can't get that one now. Mm, pivoting to the 24. Looks like. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give him William up. Byron. There you go, old Bill. Well, Bill. chat. It's a shame you had to take this guy so fast for your underdog. He's good enough to win. I got Bubba Wallace. Mm. Oh, my God. You're taking him. Thank you. I get my man here. I'm going to go with Dennis, Denny Hamlin. The menace. I think Denny is going to come to the first race at Nessa My Track since their feud, and he is going to win. He's going to win. My my number three, Bubba was my number two. I had Tyler Reddick as my number three, actually. Reddick, Reddick was, was my, my number, number two. Yeah, I thought about Reddick. Mine went Byron, know. Larson, Hamlin, Reddick. So yeah, I but I, yeah. I I I tried Hamlin last week and it did, it didn't it didn't go my way, so I wasn't doing that one again. It's a new week. <laughs> and say he beat your favorite track owner. <laughs> says Nick in the chat. <laughs> how, how much you want to bet if he wins, he'll be, he'll say something smartass. Oh, oh, in in the at the award banquet, there will be something mentioned to Marcus Smith. I would guarantee it. Oh yeah. Do you think yeah. Marcus Smith is going to be there this weekend? Probably, right? Probably. It has to be, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I assume. And I'm going to sit here he, and get my lasagna. I, I, he, was at, he was at Circuit America. I saw him there, so I know. Who's, he'll be who's the president of Texas now? Because when it was Eddie Gossage, he was so forward-facing. He had a big personality. He was very polarizing. But I don't know who's in charge over there now. Because it's not Eddie Gossage. Uh, he retired a year or two ago. Someone who's just staying the hell out of the way. Yeah. It's maybe the right change of pace for Texas after – the last few years. And... Say, who is the new president of Texas Motor Speedway? Uh, Mark Faber. Literally never heard of him, but it's probably good Godspeed. that we don't know his name. Yeah. Yeah. But but one one I, a few names I do want to know of Danny. Who uh, who else is to mention in the super chat stage break? Oh yeah, where, where'd we end up? Oh wait, we ended up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that is the segment. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Uh, a A Prada, appreciate the nine ninety nine. Say what you want about Denny Hamlin as a driver. Off the track, the man is the most honest driver out there. Shout out to Denny for calling out the crappy short track package and poor track leadership. Hey, okay, I'll give you credit for that. Sly Supersonic, appreciate the five forty nine. How are you guys? Denny Hamlin said nothing wrong. Uh, I'm not going to say this part about Marcus Smith just because that's not for me. Is it, is it personal? A little bit. That's the thing. We can't get per – that, that's, the, that's the one thing that they sh just don't keep make it personal. That's just all. Just sit and eat you, some lasagna. You do, gotta, you do gotta remember, we still like people at SMI. They let us – and let us come do our do our style of content at the track. So we're not gonna we're not gonna go that way. We're not gonna do that's career when, seppuku. I want to. I just want to know where Eddie Gossage is now. Now I'm curious. I see him on Twitter all the time. He's got his hot takes. But where else is he? Where is that man? I want to. I'd he, like to. Like to. 
He thought I'd like to just... shake your hand. <laughs> you got soft hands, boy. <laughs> Gary Buki, appreciate the ten dollars. Let's just say that's the last time I ever host a Martinsville watch party until we see actual passing on short tracks again. Embarrassing, but oh, hey, man. at least we had some dang good chicken wing dip. That's that's good. That's Gotta have positive. Gotta have positive. I had people in my post race stream being like, "Jared, why don't you do?" race watch alongs i'm like you really want to sit there for three hours having me just go hey look they're still not passing <laughs> yeah you wouldn't want that is eddie gossage actually in, in galveston i hope that's true i don't think it is but i'd love if that was true napa racing fan 927 appreciated two dollars hms one two three and bowman was great race was not <laughs> mickey logano appreciated 499 byron has dethroned larson as the top driver at HMS. It's his time now. You might be right. You might be right. Hunter Nixon Fishing, appreciate the 99. I was really rooting for Kyle Bush to get close to Earnhardt's 76 wins. As of today and how he's ran, I don't think he's going to do it. I yeah, might have that to is, agree with you on that one. Yeah, I kind of agree too, and it's a shame. But but hey, Kyle's going to race for – he could race for another six or seven years because doesn't he want to race with his with Brexton? So yeah. I think he's still going to win. I just don't know – like I think he, I think he's still capable of getting one win a year, just because that's how the kind of driver he is. Yeah, I but mean, I don't if know how many Braxton would have to be sixteen to do trucks, and Kyle said he wanted to do that race trucks with him, so he's probably asked six years. I will say I called that in twenty nineteen that about the wins. Like when we good had, job. I, I just hope Hang that whenever, the banner. <laughs> I just hope that whenever he's ready to do that, that he's not just talking about a race. I want to see Kyle Busch go try to win a truck series championship and be the first driver to win them in all three series. Oh, that Why would not? be awesome. That'd be fun. I want to see it. Mike Manning, appreciate the 999. Hey gang, sorry I haven't been tuning in. Got a new full-time job. My shift starts at 4 a.m. Thankfully I get Sundays off. Love this season so far besides Phoenix, Richmond, and Marksville. Eh, there's a trend to it. And I, I can't, I can't disagree <laughs> with there, Mike. Hey, it's congrats on the new job. Yeah. yeah congrats on that. Fred Dog 81 appreciate it, two dollars. Does Bubba win in the next ten races? He seems hot. Hey, I picked him, so I hope so. He's got a great shot this weekend for sure. That's a sneaky good pick. Kansas is still up. Yeah, hey, Kansas coming up. Yeah. Chris McIntyre appreciate the five dollars. Give me seven hundred fifty horsepower, an altered gear package to highly discourage shifting, a tire that actually wears at the All Star race at Wilkesboro. Use it as a test. Not a bad yeah. idea. Not a bad place to test it. Shorty PJM, appreciate the 571. The Bubba and Alex pick. That's the one where um, I think the four Hendrick drivers were together and and uh, Bubba snuck in. He's like, I got a red fire seat. I'll stand up next to you guys and kind of give him, give, him, give him Bowman a noogie, a noogie there. Uh, <laughs> thought they hated each other, says Shorty. Mind blown plus obsessed. Two of my top three guys, South Kakalaki, undefeated champ out oh, of South Carolina. Uh, yeah, hey, congrats to the, the uh, women Gamecocks team. They played a heck of a game and got the W. And, uh, but yeah, no, it is kind of funny to think about the Bowman and Bubba thing after that race at Charlotte all those years back. And, you know, but they they, they got over it, I'm sure. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. I say, oh, my thing messed up on me. Hold on. Yeah, it always uh, refreshes yeah. right when you're about to read one. Yeah. AAPCS, appreciate the 199 at this point. Fox is actually being ran by Jared. Appreciate what I said is monkeys. Monkey. <laughs> monkey. We went and watched uh, God, Godzilla and King Kong last night. Me and Jared did, and I just kept telling him it's lizard versus monkey. 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 <laughs> Gary Buki, appreciate the five dollars. These incorrect win stats have to have been a gag by some dudes in the editing room to see if the racing put everyone to sleep and wouldn't notice. Feels that yeah. way, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, Dominion 42, appreciate the $10. The best stream is Ad Sports, which has the full feed during Fox commercial breaks, but it's still mostly connected to the Fox feed. So that's, so what's shown is still, so what's shown is still all we get. Hope next year brings change. That's fair. Hopefully. Yeah. Excited to see other broadcast partners, see what creativity they can come up with. Yeah, that's that is true. I'm looking forward to that. 
Bruce Morgan, appreciate the 499 from you, my friend. The HMS and Gibbs are distancing themselves from the pack. Better pit crews and crew chiefs help them win with strategy and pit speed because cars are so even. That's, that, that is true. That's where we're seeing the biggest difference a lot of these races is the, is the pit crews have been noticing. That is a great point about the pit crews. That has now become such a difference maker in these races. Which is interesting because people thought that, oh, changing to a one lug will just make it worse. But no, it's kind of yeah. you know, it's more about how fast can you actually be. I just want to see Gibbs try one of those wacky choreographies again, like they did for a brief period. Remember that when they were running all around one side of the car, mm -hmm. they ditched that oh, pretty yeah. quick, but I want to see him see it through. Maybe they were onto something, you know, you just gotta get <laughs> the, the tire changers have to be small so that you can just throw them over. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Logano, appreciate the 499. Larson is going to wreck out of the Indy 500 by either pulling an egregious block or by squeezing someone in the wall. Is that the same thing? They're kind of the same thing, but yeah, he could very well could. Yeah. I saw, I saw him today. There was a clip of him testing where I don't remember who it was coming up behind him, but he did like IndyCar style, tried to make like a preemptive block. Cause you, know, you can't in IndyCar, right? And it, and the, you're, the rule is you can't like make a reactionary block. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that is a rule that they can call. Um, so he was like kind of proactively trying to block and I'm like, all right, he's getting his, you know, getting his wits about him. He's got something here, but yeah, who knows? Hopefully he does well. Uh, Fred Dog 81, appreciate the five dollars. Since we're talking wrestling, Denny Hamlin and Marcus Smith are to CM Punk and Tony Khan of NASCAR. Okay, for context on this, uh, CM Punk had a very open uh dispute with the people at AEW and Tony Khan, their leader. Um, that happened at an event in England, I think, uh, and uh, that blew up. There was a backstage fight. I haven't had a chance to watch it, but apparently, so CM Punk is now long removed from AEW back in WWE. Apparently, the AEW thought it'd be a great idea to publicly air, finally released backstage footage of the fight that happened with CM Punk and a wrestler named Jack Perry on tonight's episode of AEW. And I'm like, that's just so unprofessional. The man has already gone from your company. He's already admitted that there was a problem backstage. Why are you even doing that? And so I think that's what he's saying there. Just entirely unprofessional uh, between those two and what we saw with Marcus Smith and Denny Hamlin. Uh, M. Martin Fan for Life. Appreciate the 499. This is just his words here. It's not my words. When Bruton Smith ran SMI, he invested in the tracks and show. Marcus is a typical kid taking and milking a company for the cash. And he says it's sad to see. I'm not going to comment on that, but appreciate you sharing your thoughts there with us. Give him credit for Wilkesboro, too. Bringing that yeah, back. That is true. Fair enough. Sly Supersonic, appreciate it, $2.10. Hey, Eric, did you? What? What? Lay it on me. I can take it. What is it? Yeah, no, Maybe I'm not. Interested. Is, it, is it that bad? Can you screenshot it and send it in our chat? I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say the sense of version because you went to the bathroom and said that you remember to wipe your butt. I was going to make a, I was going to make a bad joke, but no, no I'm not, I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> Austin Blanche said, appreciate it. Dollar 99. And I, I saw this last week. Love you, Danny, but April Fool's Day's videos are lame. Hey, that's your opinion, but there's way more people that enjoyed that video on April Fool's. So I'm going to keep doing it, man. Sorry. I, I liked it. It was it was very in an in depth analysis of one of my favorite films. Alex Love appreciate the five dollars. Pardon my French, but every time I think of Logan Paul, I hear the biggest douche of the universe song from South Park. I really don't like that guy. I think of the dead body. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think of that one too. And he's wearing like an alien hat on his head. Like if if it wasn't so I, messed up, it would be. It is like kind of morbidly funny. I will give him credit for this. I don't think he should have the United States Championship right now like he does in WWE, but the man is a really good wrestler. He's, for not having done this all of his life, he's done really good with it. So I will give him credit for that. Austin Blancet, appreciate another dollar ninety nine. Jarrett mentioning Cody Rhodes makes me happy. Oh. <laughs> no problem. I'm just throwing this out there. I did have to give him context for the show, so he knew. Break the illusion much, Danny. I mean... Sorry, let's go back back in time. It's kayfabe. Yep. 
Napa Racing Fan 927. Appreciate the $2. What's Texas future? Super Speedway? Hope pre-2017, one and two. I don't know what they're going to do to it. Did you see you guys see that photo of the the scoring pylon? Yeah, that was interesting. Suspiciously gone. That like was interesting. You can't just easily remove something like that. That makes me think they might be planning some sort of construction soon. Maybe it just broke and they were too embarrassed to fix it or, or like to have it show up. It was up on cheaper beep. to fix it. Uh, it was <laughs> cheaper to take it down than fix it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. Three and a half mile, 35 degree bank, Texas mega speedway. 35 it can degree, happen. 35 degree in the trioval, 45 in the corners. <laughs> sure. Uh, but no, nah, if, if they did change it, it'd probably just be like Atlanta, sadly. Yeah. Um, but that'll do it for the uh, Super Chats. Uh, oh, oh, one more, one more. Napa <laughs> Racing Fan 927, appreciate it, $2. Please, Bowman, win at Texas. I want this configuration gone. <laughs> I'm rooting for Bowman then. Damn. I'd be, I, like, if they made it pre 2017 Texas, it'd be fine. Like, yeah, I, I love that. that. I love that um, by the time it, like, it, they had replaced it, I actually really loved that configuration because the racing was good. Yeah, it wore out nicely. Oh, sorry. One more. Alex ASMR. Love, appreciate $5. Speaking of the April Fool's video, I'm an OG Herbie fan. Saw all four movies and realized the main villain of the first one was Mr. Banks from Mary Poppins. That is true. That is I, true. I haven't seen the original. I love the original Mary Poppins, though. Mr. Banks. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. But that will do it. We uh, took what was took what might have been a short show. And somehow stretched out to two and a half hours as never, we know how to do it. Never doubt our ability to stretch things. Okay. Sorry. I'm not trying to be rude here. Fred Dog 81. Appreciate another $5 from you. Sorry. One more wrestling related question. What is NASCAR's version of finishing the story? Elliot winning the Daytona 500, Hamlin with the championship. <laughs> I mean, I would say Dale Earnhardt finally winning the championship felt more like that. Or sorry, winning the Daytona 500. Yeah, that probably. Yeah, is. it did. I I think the modern version. I think there would be a story concluding with Hamlin winning the title. Yeah. Story that never got finished to me. That was sad. Was Tony Stewart never winning the Daytona 500? Yeah, Ooh, Kyle yeah. Busch still hasn't done it. There's a few, but like winning the season, the championship, especially with how much of a meme it is at this point. Like I'm actually in my head right now picturing Denny on stage at Phoenix, and it seems weird. Can you imagine Steve Phelps handing Denny the big silver trophy and Denny like that doesn't no, like not even AI could generate that image right now and oh, make it oh feel man. Like I, I, I so wish we had a championship race at Bristol now so Marcus Smith could hand him the trophy along with Steve Phelps. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would be great. Well, we should probably roll on out of here before they yeah, <laughs> we should probably say goodbye. So where are we so, going? With that being said, you can catch us next week, April 17th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, live over on Eric Estep's channel. And we will have special guest, IDK player, also Jonathan. known as Jonathan Ramos, on with us. He looks so well behaved. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at that <laughs> upstanding gentleman, that citizen of this fine city of Nashville. Look, That's I just buttoned up that's the everything. kind of guy you want your daughter to date right there let's look at him so he, he could button up that top button though maybe you know that's just a little more modest but we will be joined by the well-behaved jonathan ramos <laughs> we're making promises that he cannot keep <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna show up just be like full-on ripped shirt down the middle be like hey guys how's it going yeah i would not be shocked it's gonna be a fun one we'll see you next week over on eric's channel and until next time, thanks so much for watching, and we hope you have a great day. Bye, guys. Don't you dare take the name of Texas in vain. Can we say the plans from Texas are gone? Drivers!